podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Sports Social, now on the Sports Social Podcast Network. This is for f one sake, your fourth favourite F1 podcast. That seems optimistic. No, I think that's fair. You've got the ones with the people who are actually at the races, you've got the ones with the people who've actually driven cars, and you've got the ones with the people who don't hate everything, and then us. This is for f one sake, hosted by someone who's barely a journalist and another person who's barely a comedian. I mean, we barely talk about F1. Well, we're barely a podcast, to be honest. It works well. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Because you've got powerful legs, how do you get the physique? Was it gym or how do you get the physique? Um, I've always been that. She's actually not got powerful legs. Do you shower in your dressing room? Do you have a shower on the day of a fight or not? Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I sure this... no one will mind. Move him out of here, Darren. Ricky Hatton didn't go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold him to sexual I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Boogley only. <laughs> Live on <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> Go to your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a handout. Boxing, um, Natter's messenger group. Oh, they're going to, oh, I'm going to be the king. Jay Bump, you know what I'm saying? Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 562nd edition of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast. I'm your host, Steve Wellings, and joining me on the call, we have Andy Patterson and Dominic Henry going live on YouTube from 8 o'clock every Sunday evening. The ad-free Patreon RSS feed updates shortly after the show concludes. Hello to everyone listening through the week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Sports Social, and YouTube as well. Don't forget to leave a review on the podcast player of your choice. Wherever you're listening to this right now throughout the entire month of March, nothing less than five stars is acceptable. A bit of a wackiness and weirdness over the weekend went on. Andy was showing us a few clips there from Poland. No doubt we'll be covering that later, along with Anthony Joshua. Box related, of course, <laughs> but all, all boxing related, well, sort of boxing related, tangential, bit of a street fight in the ring, which is what AJ and Garner might turn out to be this Friday evening. We'll be watching that. We'll be previewing it a bit later on. Canelo ducking fights, possibly. We'll be discussing that. Sam Eggington, perfect segue from AJ and Canelo. And a bit of Jake Paul as well, plus the ghost fight, the fight that never was. We will start, though, Andy, over on Top Rank ESPN from the Turning Stone Resort and Casino. Value of the Week territory, if they could keep the lights on during the undercard, they went out about three times. But they managed to keep it uh, bright as they could for the main event between Otabek Kolmatov and Raymond Ford for the vacant WBA featherweight title. A very well put together card altogether, Andy, I thought. It was a really good main event, almost ruined by Tim Bradley and Joe Tessator. They were horrible all night. Not going to dwell on that, though. On to the action. Two really skilled fighters, Kolmatov. we kind of seen him before against Thomas Patrick Ward. Probably up at the point of the stoppage at the time, I thought. Looking back on it, he was behind by a point on one card. Don Ackerman had it 105-104 to Raymond Ford. The other two judges, Eric Marlinski and John McKay, had it 106-103 to Kolmatov, if he could have just stayed on his feet. Uh, I've not watched it back. Wasn't that hot, happy with the stoppage at the time when it occurred? I'll tell you what I saw, Andy. No, it's can, weird, eh? You can tell me. It, what, what I thought was, obviously, Kolmatov was knackered. He, he went down. The, he had a knee problem, as Tim Bradley said, and he was getting literally run around the ring. He was hurt. He was fatigued. He ran for comfort. And he, he, he ran, there's only so far you can run, run in a ring, as you know, before you hit the ropes. 
and he hit the ropes. Now, he did turn his back, as people say, but I thought maybe the ropes were keeping him up. And I thought Charlie Fitch was going to initiate a count. The ropes are keeping you up. Instead, he waved it off. Kolmatov didn't mind. People on Twitter were kind of mixed on it. I don't really have a dog in the race. I don't care about either fighter particularly. More power to both of them. But I know you can't turn your back. But it just felt to me like he was running for cover. The knee went. He was absolutely done. But maybe the last 20 seconds, I thought a count was coming, Andy. Yeah, but at the end of the day, mate, you know yourself, it was looking like he was, yeah, okay, maybe the leg was hurt, but he wasn't staggering as such. looked like he was running. His back was turned. Mm -hmm. The the arms were down. It's like you're kind of like baiting the ref, really, to kind of like step in. And he took a shot. I think it was quite on the money that... I don't know, it's it's one of them, but what I would say is it was such a good fight, I would love to see a rematch, actually. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's maybe called for, but I'm one of the, it was a weird stoppage. I, I, I agree with you in that regard. I, a lot of people were kind of pissed off the fact that it was a, a standing eight count. Um, what did you think about the um, the first stop, uh, the first day uh, knockdown? Do you think that was a knockdown? You know what? I can't honestly say because I haven't watched it back. Like I, I said, that's, back either, that's why I was interested in what you and you guys thought about the actual stoppage. I can't, I can't even remember. I suppose so. That would have been a point. Then it would have been another point, and then the scorecards would have got really interesting. So, I, I, unless anyone in the chat wants to correct me, I honestly can't even remember it. Andy, I've watched that much boxing yeah. over the weekend. It was great, but you know, it was, it was, it was great actually. I mean, you got to mention like like uh, Kolotov's uh, body shots. I really liked the way he kind of mixed it up actually. But full credit to the to Ford. Now, I mean, <sighs> talk about. Having to weather rocky moments against a guy slightly bigger than you, and he was he was getting touched up a little bit. You know, he showed rocky moments, as I say, but he was also showing really good defence. And that he was blocking some, uh, you know, some some good shots. I really thought the corner were absolutely fantastic. I forget what his trainer's name is, but I thought he was bang on the money with everything he was telling him. He kept it short and sweet. He kept it simple. Nothing of this razzmatazz. None of this fancy talk. He just kept it simple. Tell him what he's got to do. It's a close fight. You got to, you got to, you got to go for it. You got to go for broke. You know, you can rest tomorrow. All that, so, you know, all the right things. And uh, I think in the end, it's he's basically well, obviously he's pulled out the bag there off, off those scorecards. Kept punching. Um, I really liked his stamina actually as well. Uh, got into the kind of championship rounds, but also as well as the fact is he got in the eleventh round when he got cut. Uh, on the cheekbone, and then they got cut again um, on the eye. He could have unraveled there because he was getting a lot of heat in that 11th round, and they held it together, and they came back in the 12th, and Kolotov just looked like he was out of gas because you could see four was then waving them in. Come on, let's go. You would want to have the fight in the 11th round. You're, you know, where are you now? And then he's 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 obviously stepped up the gas a little bit. Um, it's what you love for, really, in, in, in this type of sport, but... The stoppage is a bit weird for me, but as I say, is you turn your back, you put your hands down. It looks like you run away from the referee. There's, 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 mm. th there's three cases that kind of like you're know, maybe baiting the ref there to kind of like stop it. And I don't know what you say, mate. I mean, it's, what is it to be safe and late? I don't know, but it was mm. one of those fights where as you maybe deserve to see the final bell, but the referee doesn't he know what, how long's left in the clock at that point. Possibly, I think, what mm. were the final ten seconds? Uh, there was about 20 seconds to go, and people said okay. he should have took a knee. I don't think that, that that kind of cognitive thinking can come in the heat of battle. I don't it think he could be. even comprehend that, could he? He just did what he, his body was... Could, well, it's a do, close really. fight, mate. I mean, he's yeah. got to be thinking to himself, if I take a knee, there's, there's, yeah. I'm potentially losing this fight. I've got to stay on my feet. It's yeah. a close fight. Yeah. Just another example of what Steve's saying about not thinking about taking a knee. Think about Jimmy and Taylor in that last 30 seconds against Frotch. You're, too, yeah. you're trying to survive. You, you, you don't... These guys, it's not going through their head to take a knee. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's in the heat of battle, Andy, isn't it? Kolmatov yeah. received a standing out. Michael Thompson says it would have just tipped it as a win for Ford as well. These things are going through your head 100 mile a minute, aren't they? Plus you're hurt, fatigued, dehydrated. You're thinking, man, he's going to be panicking by this point if he's, if he's going to take the count. I mean, I really I need to go back and watch the first one because you know, that, that, that could have like sealed the deal, but... Seven um, seconds left, Andy. Sorry, seven, Cedric Sniff says that makes it more interesting then. Because what that means they've had the 10 second clapper then. Mm. You usually have that in, in America, don't they? But maybe the referee does, you know, sometimes the referee doesn't hear that because he's too focused on what's happening in the ring at that point. And as he says, you've, you've got a fighter who looks like he's on the verge of collapse and he's running about the ring and that. You're, so you're, you're kind of dialed in to see what, you know, what he's doing. Ford, you then, you've got him piling in behind you trying to kind of like keep the punches moving. It's, as you see, it's 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 a fluid situation, and it's like it's like rapid. It's you know you got guys in there throwing you know heavy shots. It's a quick one to pull, but 
it's, it's a hard one. And I say it was, it was, a, it was a hard fight for both guys. But um, I've got to say, rematch. We'll have a rematch. We'll, you know, hopefully, get, we'll get a clean end in that way. But mm-hmm. it was, it was a great fight. Yeah, that's all we can say. It was, it was a great fight. Uh, Will Bolton says uh, Cole was up on my card, was uneasy up close all night with Ford pushing him back. Yeah, I think he was as well. I thought it was Kolmatov's fight to lose. The cards would indicate that as well. Ford looked a lot better when he walked Kolmatov down. Maybe it's a confidence thing with him. I think he lasted the distance well. I think Kolmatov was going to the body early, but towards the end he neglected that and Ford started going to the body. I think as well... Um, Kolmatov put a lot into the 11th round. He really put it on. He saw the cut appear from the head clash or the elbow, whatever it was, and he really put a lot into that 11th round. He looked like he was about to overwhelm Ford, but Aye. ultimately, I think that just knackered him out, Andy. I was just going to say, Michael Thompson was going to be commenting here. I actually forgot about that after the, after the, the fight was stopped. Remember, he got he walked across the ring. He looked like he was still on wobbly legs at that point. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just see Michael Thompson mention it. Was yeah, a, I, I was going to bring that up myself. Yeah. He says stoppage was fine, to be honest. His legs were still a bit wobbly a couple of minutes after the stoppage, and he didn't complain either. That's why I'm asking, Andy, because at the time, my initial instinct was, I'm just saying, but, you know, when things happen, and I was like, what the fuck was going on? What's he stopped that for? But like I said, you guys have explained it to me now, and if Michael says that, that that's fair enough. That's I, didn't fair. Like I remember that, and Michael mentions that, because yeah. if you've seen him, there was a minimum walk across, and he was, there was certainly unsteadiness there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, well done for bringing that back up. I completely forgot about that. Uh, Dominic, big winners in the corner. Not only uh, Raymond Ford there, but Brian Peters was hanging around in the corner for some reason. Must have some kind of involvement in Raymond Ford. And Eddie as well didn't win the purse bid. Sent him over to top rank because he had so much faith in Ford. That's why he did that, Dominic. He sent him <laughs> over because he knew he would be able to get the job done and then he could build him up into a, a ticket seller. Uh, outstanding work from Eddie here, I think. Well, I'm glad you mentioned those things because I just had it on the tip of my tongue. The first thing I was going to say was I've only watched the fight about an hour ago. At, uh, the first thing I noticed at the end of the fight was Brian Peters getting in. I had to, I had to rewind it and actually uh, and say, well, was that actually who I thought it was? Uh, so I, I was just intrigued to sort of wonder how Brian Peters has managed to inveigle his way into the sort of councils of, of Ford. And of course, the, the, the other thing, which I'm glad you mentioned, is Eddie not winning the first bid. That was, I mean, I, I hadn't clocked it at the time when this fight was made, but the fact that Eddie, I remember Ford was at his own fighter and Eddie was um, his promoter. So um, I just twigged that Eddie must have, uh, as per, per form, not won the first bid. But now he's going to, now he's going to trot out his well-worn line that if you're good enough, um, you'll win when he, when he sends fighters on an away card. Um, but um, I have to echo what, um, what Andy was saying, uh, it was a great, great fight. Um, I mean, it was, it was a, it was fantastic action. Um, and also just echo again the corner work. Um, some of the best corner work I've seen for a long, long time in Ford's corner. Mm-hmm. Um, really. Coach Anthony, apparently, this he's called Rodriguez or something. Was yeah, it? Anthony or he, Rodriguez. Apparently, he's some kind. Of, he's had a YouTube presence in the past. Someone was saying. It was really good. I thought. Yeah. I thought I thought it was again. It was the just the nature of the instructions. He was really on him, and it was as early as after the third round. I was listening to him after the end of between the third and fourth round, and Kolmatov started to fight really, really strongly, and um, you know he, he was on him saying that you need to throw if if you're not um, if you're he's only being effective. Kolmatov's only being effective when you're not throwing. I was, um, I was basically saying you punch because he he can't do it on the back foot basically. Yeah, no one. I, I thought I thought Ford in those middle rounds that was his best part of the fight when he was coming forward and being proactive. And I was so impressed with his his uh, you know people were talking about Kolmatov's body work. I thought I thought um, Ford's body work was really really yes. impressive, especially as and the it, fight went on, Dominic. Yeah. And and Timmy Bradley wasn't giving him. They were all they were mentioning Kolmatov's body work, but they weren't mentioning Ford's. And the way Ford was, the way he was finishing on that right hook to the body, whipping it in, savage. The uppercuts as well were sneaky. Oh yeah, I the, the left uppercut and and yeah, yeah. Kolm, Kolmatov's head was in the middle. Wait, was right there for it. Um, the one thing I'll say about Ford, um, I hadn't seen him fight for a, a good while. And the, the the last time I had seen him fight was you know his early fights on the zone when he was mm-hmm. just when he was just turned over and the thing that I noticed the difference was how much more filled out he is. Um, he looks and both guys actually are huge for featherweight. Um, apparently Ford had a tough weight cut, 
um, it was a tough tough out for him on the scales. But I would I wouldn't be surprised if both these guys aren't too much longer for this for nine stone, and we'll see them soon up at Super Featherweight. But um, I, I I have to say I haven't enjoyed a fight for quite some time. And as I said earlier, Steve, you know, you, well, I'm sure we'll get on to the Venado Lopez fight, but suddenly. We had that great fight before Christmas, Espinosa and Rabisi. Featherweight starting to look. We've got Bruce Carrington there um, on top rank as well. Lots of fight that could be made. Um, we've got Nick Ball, who we'll talk about, who I think can mix it very, can mix it with this company very, very well. I think he, he's, he's capable of mixing in with, the, with these guys. Um, suddenly, we're going to see, I think, Featherweight becoming one of the must watch divisions. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be averse to seeing a rematch. What Andy was saying either, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. Um, uh, but on the stoppage now, well, let's get on to the stoppage. Um, when I was watching that, I say about an hour ago, um, and bearing in mind, I think it's always different when you know the result of the fight. Yeah, and you're not. That's watching what I'm saying. I, I didn't know when I was watching at the time, so there's that kind of emotion. You know, you don't really know what's going on at the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I I wasn't. I didn't have a problem with the stoppage. Um, I thought it was legit, and the other thing again, Charlie Fitch, I have him down as a very good ref. New yes. York referees, uh, uh, Harvey Doc uh, Fitch, they, they do produce per, uh, you know, a lot of very good referees. He was a referee for the Frotch Groves rematch. You remember he didn't even allow for, uh, Groves to try and beat the count. He just looked at Groves when he was crumpled on the canvas with his knee underneath him, and he just waved it off. So before the stoppage in the last round, I. I think, you know, when the fight was starting and they were introducing Fitch as a referee, I was saying, right, this is a good referee. Now, the other point about, you know, turning your back, he didn't turn his back. When I always hear people saying he turned his back, he can't turn your back. Bear in mind that he didn't turn his back deliberately. He was out of control of his body at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was he wasn't in control of his legs. And he was stumbling. And I always think the telltale sign is if there's not too much of a complaint from the fighter or his corner, um, that to me, I I find that means the stoppage is okay. Um, there wasn't a complaint from either, was there? There wasn't a complaint, and you know, I I'm always on the side, especially in a world championship fight. I'm always on the side of not stopping a fight. Um, I don't mind fights at a domestic level being stopped in that sort of scenario, but um, generally, I would always be one for stopping the fight, especially as says a world title fight. I'm happy for it to go on. To the edge but last night I, I, I wouldn't um, have too much of a complaint and I think the earlier that round I think Andy was talking about whether it was a knockdown I, I, I'm correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think it was given uh, Fitch didn't score the first he didn't score that as a knockdown at the beginning of that round the referee never scored that because it happened in the same round yes. as the stoppage didn't it that's right, and he didn't score the. And, and I, I never seen a replay it because obviously the stoppage, the fight was the stoppage was the main thing, wasn't it? So yes, I mean I, I saw it on the show the replay of it. Um, shortly, I think I think the show. I went to the show replay. I, I did see a one replay of it, but it was hard to tell whether anything clean had landed. Um, but I I wouldn't. The other thing people were saying was. The ref could have give the referee could have given it a standard eight count instead of waving the fight off. And I think Steve, I think you mentioned that earlier, Steve. I think that I think there's a case for that. There's a, that would have been a middle ground. Um, you know, before waving the fight off altogether, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt because there's already been a knockdown. He, he's that's going to go down. If he, even if even if um if Kalmatov had made it through to the end of the fight, that's going to go down as a ten eight round. You know, if he gives him a standard eight count. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there's a case that the referee could have could have done that, um, but but overall I wasn't I wasn't in any way annoyed with the stoppage. Yeah, I'm trying to work out the mathematics, but I'm not going to bother. But I'll tell you one thing, Dominic, just to close out on this: fair play to Ford because he was very tight at the weight. He could have crumbled mentally, physically because of the weight cut. He'd been out the ring for nearly a year as well. All those combined. Step, no. On a way, on a way turf as well, and on the guy's promotion, as we mentioned, all those factors combined for him to come back, especially after that eleventh round, as I mentioned before. Kolmatov put a lot into that eleventh round, which I think was his downfall in the end. He had a yes. real second wind in the tenth, and he, he came on, on the eleventh, and that that did for him. But Ford 
came back from all of that and uh, as we all saw to stop him in the last 10 seconds or whatever it was so all that combined fair play to Ford man he, he showed plus some the cuts there, as well plus the two and cuts the cut, he yeah. late, it's late in the living thing yeah. I thought I thought he was really I was really impressed with him and I, I just you have, you have to say you know, he's from I noticed he's from Camden in New Jersey and we all remember Dwight Braxton that was another mm-hmm. um, the Camden buzzsaw so there's something um, from that from that part of New Jersey, you know, there's a there's a tradition of of fighters with, with guts, and um, uh, I thought as well. I thought as the fight wore on, his weight of forward Ford's weight of shot was heavier, um, especially to the body. But Kolmatova thought he really give him his due in that eleventh round. He really put a serious shift in, um, and I hope we don't. I hope he's. I hope he can recover because he, you know, he. As someone was saying, you know, a few minutes after the fight was ended, he was still on rubbery legs. So, um, yeah, a great, great fight and a great card. And the other thing about that that venue in Verona, uh, the Turning Stone, because it has a sort of tendency to throw up great fights. There's always seems to be really quality fights at that venue. Yeah. Top rank keep going back to that, don't they? It seems to be a nice little place where they're going to the Virgin Hotels before and then they did the bubble on that and they seem to have found a little home for it for a lot of fighters. It's a good, good intimate atmosphere, and um, I remember some of Golovkin's fights were there. The early fights when he was breaking into the, on the America back in 2012, 13, like the like the the Abrazado fight was there. I think the the Gregor's Proxa fight was there. You get you sort of get good action fights at the venue, but um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see you know what what both guys go on the next. It will indeed. We shall move on to the rest of the card as well. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez, El Venado, Andy, going in against Raya Abe, the Japanese fighter. He was a bit uh, up and down, no special effects, as Rob would say. These Japanese guys are absolutely tough. But Venado Lopez, he's turning into quite the fighter, really. Um, what's going to be next for him? Who knows? But he got the job done anyway, closed the eye up, landed the, the shots that count. And I thought this was going to be the main event originally. But then, obviously, Kolmatov Ford got pushed to the top status. It was a, a co-main event, chief support, whatever they were calling it. IBF World Featherweight title. Were you impressed with what you saw from Lopez, Andy? Yeah, to a point, mate. Um, what I would say is, I was maybe this. Well, obviously, um, uh, AB's um, eye got smashed up. Remember, it was the second round. I think it was pretty early, mm-hmm. and uh, it looked like it was either like the either the, the front knuckle or it looked like possibly a thumb was within the eye there. And you know, you said fair play to him, but he wasn't really offering anything really bad, was he? Really, Lopez was just like he wasn't really setting up his shots. He just kind of like stepped to the stepped at the distance and just threw threw whatever he shot he wanted. To be fair, I don't know about you, but some of the ways he throws his, throws his punches sometimes, certainly the way he kind of like tries to turn the turn the hand over, it looks a wee bit like Golovkin the way he tries to kind of throw his shots. Yeah, um, that's, that's a good that. observation, actually. You know, on his style, he has this really unorthodox style, obviously, but some people, Andy, they often paint him as a bit of a crude slugger, but I don't mm. think that's the case. He's actually very accurate. He's quite precise to the head and to the body. He can clearly bang as well. It's an effective style. It is an orthodox, mm-hmm. and you always think to yourself, oh, anyone with decent straight shots will be able to catch him. But so far, apart from his early losses, nobody has. I thought Abe might give him trouble, Andy, because he lost to Ruben Villa early in his career, who's quite a skilled, uh, st- you know, effective straight punch in southpaw. So I thought Abe might give him a few uh, problems. Absolutely not. Maybe it was to do with the eye, but for his style, he looks easy to catch, but people struggle to catch him. Yeah, I mean, he was caught a couple of times, to be fair. He, he can leave the chin up in the air a wee bit, and he can yep. be a wee bit leaky down the middle, as, as, as you point. mentioned there. But he can, he can. He, I mean, obviously, when he lands, it, it either hurts or it, you know, they're certainly causing you know, a cumulative effect at some point. Um, it's just the way he kind of like goes into it, though. He doesn't, even, as I say, he doesn't step. He doesn't st- uh, set up any shots to, like jab one two. It will be like say, he'll walk in. He'll maybe try and leap him with a shot, and then start throwing shots at the body. But you know, the left hook to the body is pretty brutal. The straight right hand, as, as I mentioned, he tries to throw it in a certain way, the kind of downward tra- trajectory. So he tries to kind of bring the two front knuckles over the strongest part of the hand, obviously, trying to really kind of you know get the power in there. But he's going to be a handful to, uh, 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 definitely to beat. And I was just thinking actually as well, especially at that weight. How would you even train for a fighter like that? Because there's not, there's nobody else I can think of that that way that fights exactly. in that style. Exactly. There is nobody. Maybe maybe Nick Ball, but that's the thought I had whenever you whenever you said whenever I was watching the fight, I was thinking, how do you get sparring partners for this guy? Who who do you get to replicate that style? 
the only person as aggressive as that is at, at that weight division the new that I can think of top of my head is Nick Ball. Lara I, I possibly any... before a few years ago, Lara would have probably put in the mix here as well. But I would I would love to see if Nick if Nick Ball comes through, I mean I think between see I, I was thinking he, he takes a very good shot, you have to say. You know, we, he he does get hit a few times. Um but he also does have Meg, Maggie Thompson said it there in the chat. He, he does have quite good head movement, especially after he's thrown one of those. Well, after he's leaped in with one of those combinations from out from far, he he gets he ducks duck low down low and comes out at an angle, and he, that happened a few times after he had thrown a combination. And um, but you know the the job Abe did hit him in the in the sixth seventh round with a, a good few shots, and none of them budged him. And I was thinking. It would really be intriguing to see him in with a real, a real bundle of strength like Ball, and to see how he would react if he takes a, a proper shot. But um, I must say I've been impressed with him every time I've seen him. His last three or four fights, um, me and Steve were at the the Mick Conlon fight last May in Belfast, um, and Steve, you 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 you'll be able to say this better than me. I remember you saying on the night that. As soon as he started landing with regularity in the second or third round of that fight, um, you could really feel that the shots at ringside. You could hear con- them, yeah. He's a concussive hitter, um, and you know he, he. I was impressed the way he leaps in with that that right hand of the body in the first couple of rounds last night. He before he before the shot that that injured the eye, he was he was having a lot of success leaping in with that right hook to the body, um, and it's it's. I was watching it. The thought that occurred to me was there's very little he does that's orthodox. Most of the stuff he does is very unorthodox. But what makes him, I think, difficult to to fight is the fact that he, he intersperses the unorthodox stuff with a, a sort of seasoning of of stuff that's maybe more orthodox. You know, he, 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 every every so often he will he will throw punches that are more orthodox. You know, he he throw. Uh, uh, a right, a, right, a straight right hand. Then he come down with a left hook downstairs. So most of the stuff is very unorthodox. But what makes it really doubly difficult to fight is the fact that there's a wee, there's a wee sprinkling of more orthodox stuff that he throws. Um, but I think he'll be very difficult to 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 argue with. And I mean, a fight that I would like to see as well. There was, there's been talk of in a way eventually moving up the featherweight. Um, I mean, I would I would be very interested to see how Inoue would go against against someone like uh, Lopez. Um, but he's he, I mean, I was looking at him at the end of that seventh round, and he he let a big he, he, the corner the, the cameras went over to him, and he, he just let out a big a big scream, you know, like a, as if he was letting off a bit of steam. He, he's a he's a character, like he's um <laughs> he, he's like a he's buzz of energy. He's um I I I really like him. I have to say, um. But again, like I mean, there's a, there's a there's a handful of fighters now, about half a dozen fighters at, at this weight. Um, there, there's some. I mean, I, I would love to see a fight between Espinosa and Lopez, and that's a fight top rank. You know, Kolmatov um, against Lopez would be even would be even up there as well, mate. Exactly. I just hope Kolmatov. I just hope he's not um, damaged by that fight last night because that was brutal last night. That fight. I think they might put him in with Espinosa because we don't really know what Espinosa is all about. I mean, he wasn't supposed to beat Ramirez, was he? Let's be honest. So unless those two rematch again, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they don't try to unify with him. The the, the sad thing is obviously about the likes. Well, Lee Wood would be a good one, like a big unit who can punch. But a Brandon Figueroa, I think, would be interesting to see how Lopez copes with him. But I mean, with the way the PBC is going at the moment, Dominic, that's obviously you yeah. know completely. We're not going to be able to see that. So you have to look at the top rank kind of things. And then you're looking at your Ramirez's, your Espinosa's. I think, uh, to, to be honest with you, actually, Dominic, I was thinking about this earlier in the week, Sado that I am. And Lopez's career trajectory, I mentioned him losing to VA, he lost to Montoya. He's on a hell of a run. He started out yeah. as a real upsetter, didn't he? I think it was Gabe Flores was the first time I became aware of him. Then he battered Isak Lowe. He's just continued this trend. I don't think Top Rank banked on him being an no. A-side at all. He keeps no. turning up. Keep it's a great, proving them wrong. He's turning into a Mexican star, really. It's a great. There was a headline in Boxing Scene during the week, and it just said Bernardo Lopez is quietly becoming a Mexican superstar. Um, and you know, I was thinking the same thing during the fight. What you just said, Top Rank had him as a sort of on a retainer, as a sort of yardstick for prospects coming up. I think, mm-hmm. I think he was yeah. sort of they had him as a sort of one of these guys that the sort of 
to throw in as a as a yardstick for guys coming through. Yeah, he was an acid it. test for Gabe Flores, wasn't he? And then he beat the shit out of him that badly that he almost ended his career. Yeah, and I I went before he fought McConlin. I went back and watched those fights that he was that he was sort of earmarked to lose. Uh, uh, the ones you're you're talking about. Um, and yeah, he was he was expected not to win those fights, but it's a great story, I think. And you would, you know, the story is that the, he he was actually a footballer. He was like a playing in, in like the Mexican second division, and he was always getting himself into scraps. And the football club said, "Here, you need to go to the gym." Um, right. That's apparently what happened. He was He's a footballer. He's a bit of a Sergio Martinez character, isn't he? Very athletic, turned from football to boxing almost. Yeah, and you can see even going back to the the way he fights that the way he leaps in with those shots. I, the other thing I looked at was, as I say, Andy said it, and it's right. He did take a few shots there in the middle rounds, before he, you know, he, he was sort of getting bored, and he, he just wanted the Timmy Bradley was saying why he, he his attitude is he just wants the Abe to stand still so he can get rid of him. But I was looking at his face after he took those shots. He doesn't mark up, you know. He has that that sort of Latin that sort of uh, physiology that means that he's he's not easily marking up from taking big shots, and he, as I say. And he didn't look budged by anything that was that was coming his way. Um, and it, it's the way. Do you ever see the when he's fighting? He just puts the hands down and he's just walking straight up. Mm-hmm. He walks straight up to the guy. He's got his hand. He's walk, following them around the ring, just walking right up to them with his hands down. It must be unnerving if you're if you're facing that. I mean, yeah. Mick put it this way: we were at the fight. Mick didn't. Mick didn't. He he couldn't. Um, he didn't have the it in to, to stand up to that sort of. That weight of shot that was, um, but it's the it's the weight of the shot combined with the the the, the angles that he throws him in. He's um, I really enjoy watching him fight. I have to say, I really look forward to his fights. Um, what about what about a fight between Bruce Carrington and? Uh, I mean, Bruce Carrington's a top rank fighter, isn't he? He was there yeah. last night. I actually, he was saw ringside. Him. That's right. Well, that would be that would make sense. Uh, Dominic, as in they're always trying to bump off Lopez. Why not try and feed him to Carrington? Who wasn't it? Carrington who beat Bernard Torres, I think, last week or the week before. Yes, yes, it was, yeah. a, it was a good knockout. It was a. I mean, they're they're. I actually haven't seen that fight. I know it was it was in the second round knockout, wasn't it? It was fourth, I think, off the top of my head. It was a cracking finish, though. Yeah, I saw the finish, but I must go back and watch the full fight. Um, but um, I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I I think it'd be a. I think I I would I would love to see him. Um, in a big fight because as corner were telling him at the end he had a great seventh round, and the corner that through the translator they were saying the fans are loving this. This is great for the fans. So that's his attitude. Like it's important to him. I think that he's involved in attractive fights. Um, but I'm I'm just thinking after watching the two fights and great card. I was just thinking, you know, this has suddenly become one of the most exciting divisions. I think. For the and, and I think there's actually a genuine prospect more so than in other divisions of the fights actually being made. Um, but as, as I've, I think Andy's in the same boat as me. I, I, I believe Nick Ball is good. I think he's, um, I think he's good enough to mix it at this level. Um, now he we'll has to come, idea, I suppose. We will, we will, but um, I think there's some great fights on the horizon. Hopefully so. We'll discuss that uh, later on. Nick Ball's going in against Ray Vargas. Uh, anything from the undercard that took your fancy, Andy? Brian Norman Jr. Uh, he's a decent fighter. He's never really convinced me. He got dropped in the first round against Janelson, Figueroa, Boca Chica, and then they proceeded to headbutt each other, to elbow each other. There was blood flying everywhere. The doctor did the longest check on someone's face in boxing history in the third round, and then eventually they called it off. It was a bit of a messy one, this. Both of them managed to get out of there, I say unscathed, but just about with their lives. I never caught any of the other card, mate. Um, I did, I'm just going through the box track at the minute. I, I do know there's a guy here called... Uh, what's his name? Nico Ali Walsh. I've heard Ooh. of him before, actually. It's something about his granddad again, I forget. <laughs> Ah, uh, Gary Walsh's son, I think he was. Anything from Gary you, Dominic? <laughs> Just looking down the undercard, Rowan Palanco, he's a Gary Hyde fighter, went in against Tariq Zaina. Zaina's a real runner, so... I, can't I didn't, I didn't see anything, there. Steve, apart from the two um, the two men, the two featherweight fights. Um, it looks like you're saying on, uh, Gary Hyde was involved, like there's a there's an Irish sort of... Um, sounds like there was a bit of an Irish involvement there last night, so... Um, yeah, uh, I, I didn't... Gary picks them up, doesn't he? He got he had a, 
Moroccan before, and then he had Hassan and Dam. I think he was to do with Yuri Kalenga at one point. He tends to pick up these guys, Mark Heffron as well. And he's got mm. Polanco, looks pretty pretty decent actually. Floyd Diaz was on the undercard as well. He's called calls himself Cash Flow. He had an eight round win over Edwin Rodriguez. Troy Isley knocked out Marcus Hernandez. Brandon Moore is a bit of an underwhelming heavyweight. He got a good win. Nico Ali Walsh, as uh, Andy mentioned, and Bryce Mills. He's an exciting fighter, a bit of an Alan Babich kind of character, comes forward, big big fan base. He had a win over Gerfred uh, Najayot, I think you call him. He, he thought he won the fight, but I didn't, I didn't think he won it. But it's a good, good card, Dominic, overall, to be honest with you, from top to bottom. Yeah, it um, looked like, I mean, just the, the two, the two, it was two featherweight fights. I was just thinking, I like that that format. You know, you've got two fights in the same division, both for world titles. Um it just worked very well. Um, hopefully, and you know, top rank are probably the best at doing it. But um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to watch what way they go with all those fighters next. What way the matches work? Yeah, James G saying Gary Hyde has uh, had Mohammed Rabi, uh, mainly Rocking, managing eh? his own son. Yeah, Tommy he Hyde, his son's a good fighter. Ah, uh, was he? Did he know? Was I forget? Was was that a, a Olympic bronze? But it was one of the major tournaments. He, he medaled. Yeah, he was it Olympics? Me. Aye, was it? Yeah. Aye, yeah. Yeah, I could, aye, the, okay, that must have been. When was that? Like real years ago. He's left Hyde now. That's how I was waiting to say. Aye, I've yeah. heard the Rabi for long enough, mate. But I can remember him when uh, when he was in the amateurs. But I'm sure it was at the Rio Games when he signed them I after think, the Rio yeah, Games. Yeah, so maybe even yeah, after London. Got to be. Got to be. Yeah. One of the two. I London or, or Rio. Uh, David Musters jumped in. He said, "Evening, lads. Quite fancy the Bolden Garner to batter AJ. I disagree. We'll talk about that one later on. Ooh. Talking to batterings, Andy. I mentioned it earlier. We can't hold off any longer. Adam Kovnaki. He's gone from twenty okay. and zero to twenty and five in quick time, man. Who would have thought getting punched in the face regularly <laughs> was going to end this way? That dude is washed, washed, and double washed. washed. <laughs> oh, he's only thirty four today, and he's got the alias of baby face too. <laughs> baby face. I uh, coming back having that that hilarious rematch. Certainly, kind of like." Put paid to him, like to be fair, but if oh, the money, what's that five back to back now? He's, he's lost, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, I think he got done in inside 50 seconds. Actually, it was you know, people are moaning about you know the the Komatov top. He's not basically Kwanaki basically took a couple of shots, sagged into the ropes, really, and just took a couple of follow ups. The referee just stepped in and boom, called the fight off. He's got he's got booed at the ring, basically, as well. So, uh, yeah, he's, um, what was that, 252 pounds, I think he was weighing. So he isn't really in fighting shape uh, as such. Like, yeah, this look a bit bloated and that. It was, mate, that's him, that's him back doing it domestic level in Poland, fighting for the Polish title. So if he's getting iced in 45 seconds or 50 seconds, whatever it was, and that, I'll, I'll forget who's living in one. Uh, and, yeah, it's time it's time to hang it up. Like, But the Hellenia's fights have taken whatever was left to him, uh, right, washed, Completely washed, mate. And if you seen his state him last night in terms of his conditioning and all that type of stuff, and that uber washed. It's never a style for longevity, is it? Taking punches like that, but he was a kind of exciting, all action little Stay puff marshmallow man during yeah. his peak. But they should, they need to cash in. I think the PBC overcooked him, didn't he? Fight, I think he fought Brazil. Spelka, Spelka was yeah. going to be a good fight. He beat Gladzi, Prince, Prince Charles Martin. At that time, they should have tried to cash him out against. A Wilder or something, or a, or even a they should have brought him over for AJ. The fact they put him in against a big puncher like Hellenius, which in hindsight looks like a mistake at the time. Hellenius was not a great run. He'd been stopped by Gerald Washington off the top of my head. You know, you would have thought Kovnaki could have got past that. But he just, that was him. He's owned out, man. He got knocked and out and he never recovered. They should have cashed him out before that, I think. Plus as well, mate, he had that, that war with Chris Nips. You know, for what yeah. I remember, it was, it, was a, it was an all-action fight with a lot of punches and that. So you just don't know what, you know, and then off, off, actually after that, like literally, was it six months after he fought Chris Nips, he's, he's got iced off Elenius and then he's got beat off him again. So, yeah, it's it's been, you probably need to see around about between the war, between, uh, probably the, the Areola fight possibly. That's, that's been when, when the slide started after that, eh, he's just never, never caught a break. But yeah, he's he's completely done now, mate. Anything else is detrimental to his health at this point going forward. Well, rumor has it, um, well, well, I've heard this afternoon or this morning that Dillian White has been licensed by the Texas um, <laughs> Texas Commission. So the big Dill's return could be. Um, wait, wait a minute here. I mean, this this guy is, has so much unlucky on un, you. So unlucky with these supplements, by the way. This is the fourth time. <laughs> He's been caught with these supplements, by the way. That's been tainted. 
Big Dell Talk against about Kovnatsky. Look. My God. Big, big, big Dell against Kovnatsky, refereed by Lawrence Cole. <laughs> the ghost of Steve Smoger. Um, what what else is going on on the undercard, Andy? We were looking at it earlier. There was um, <clears throat> an MMA fighter doing boxing who thought he was still an MMA. Aye, so your man, I'll just go and get his name here, actually. Um, I think I closed the card in there. Give me a second here. Aye, so it was a guy called Arthur uh, Bezisky, who is a pro fighter. I think he's like 9-0 and with six knockouts, fighting a guy called Mar- uh, Marcin Cianos, who apparently was a UF, some sort of MMA fighter anyway of some sort. He has been getting lit up in this fight, decided to have a go, pick up a guy, body slam him, then drop him top of him, a couple of elbows to the face, like like uh, like three three o'clock to nine o'clock, right across the face, forgetting where he is, and he's just got basically DQ'd there in the second round after like I think it was like thirty seconds in the second round or whatever and that. And the the the, the real boxer's basically lying in the ground sparked, or I think he's just selling it a wee bit and that. The next minute as like a bucket of water or a bucket of ice comes it comes into the ring and tossed mm-hmm. across, misses him by 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 a few centimetres. Absolute chaos outside and that. So I, uh, Poland is a uh, is, is a happening like to be fair. But it's also no no just mention it as well. It's a it's a it's a it's a table it's a table event. So I'm assuming we like drinks and meals possibly as well. So yeah, it's, it's not chaos. it's not like our favourite table event. Do you remember Stephen Butler, the guy who fought at Alim Canuli? He had a table event in Canada once, and that it kicked off at ringside, and they were throwing like buckets of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> these metal buckets across the ring and all. It was the one that wouldn't be Spike with Sullivan against. It was Andy Fitzgerald. Oh, I was at that. I'd never seen the likes of that oh, one. The chair I just missed him. It was a stool, <laughs> and you literally oh. seen the guy who's coming into, come into TV shot as he as he throws it because obviously the, the sheer weight of this thing and it misses Spike by about two mil. Fitz's was, brother, that was he? Too. Oh, what? <laughs> You see the legs, you just see the legs of the chair just flipping, careering through the oh, air. I was like, really excited and never seen anything like it so funny. The, the <laughs> guy's always been hit him. He's, he's put some mustard right on it. The guy's actually like swung it like a like a discus. He's actually then coming through with the momentum. Doesn't it just miss him at the last second though? It like sort of careers off, doesn't it? Swerves, <laughs> swerves at the last, the last second day. I thought it's, like contact, man. it's like something you It's like something you would have seen at like a Riddick bullfight or something. Like. <laughs> It, it, um, was that Steve? Was that the night that Macklin, Matt Macklin fought for against Sebastian oh, Highland? Sebastian Highland. It was on the undercard, absolutely. And then Declan Geraghty lost to John O'Carroll after the main event. Yeah, yeah, I remember it now. I remember it now. Me, but poor old Kovnaki. Here, are Dominic. I've got it up on the screen for you here. So Dillian White clear, cleared to resume boxing career after contaminated supplement caused positive drugs test le- last year. Um, let's have a look. So this is the line I liked here. I'm going to highlight it. Hopefully, you can see it's it at home. See. It says, but White, who trains in the United States with Buddy McGirt and is licensed by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, was found to have been the innocent victim of contamination of a nutritional supplement following an extensive investigation. So Dominic, as Martin from New Age Boxing said earlier, he hasn't got a British license. He's on a Portuguese license and he's been cleared by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Man, what the fuck? Uh, Only in boxing? Who's, who's the expert by way? <sighs> No, I mean, honestly, not. you're right. Only in boxing, man, can you have something like this? I mean, I had to laugh at it. Give me a second to pull up the the, the actual article that we're reading. I had to laugh. A white victim of contaminated circ- uh, substance according to investigation. Now, who was the investigating person again? Give me a second here. Because yeah, I just want to see if it was an independent person or if it was someone who was actually called in by... Yeah, Mr. White was the victim, it says yeah, here. Yeah, here it says here. Uh, my... <laughs> Aye, so it says here... Uh, according to Sky Sports, a forensic expert concluded my expert view is that Mr. White was the victim of a contaminated supplement that did not disclose the contaminant among its ingredients and he did not he did not ingest the contaminant intentionally. But doesn't he say who this guy is? Uh, so has he been has he been brought in by Dylan White to clear himself? Has he well, he might have come Texas from the Alicia the Alicia Baumgard, uh, uh, school of clearing oh, so com- people. So he's, uh, so he's completely no independent then, basically. But he's got this right, Andy. It was like Groundhog Day every day, going over it over and over. It seems to be, doesn't it, with him failing <laughs> tests? Right. No, the thing is, mate, he's got to check the supplements more, more clearly. That's four times he failed tests now because of it. Who's the supplement he, provider? Like- Deja vu is not not no uh, no longer covers it. It's like whatever's four times seen or three times seen or. You better watch his eggs as well, man. You just didn't. You just didn't want to get the corner bend treatment now. <laughs> 
I will stop sharing Paul Dillon. What's going to happen then? He's not. He's not Andy. He's not going to come back. I on don't a, care, on mate. A, on a, on a, on a show is he? Who cares, mate? Listen, a, anybody worth for salt who's a real box man does not give a, sh- a stuff about what Dylan White's doing at this point, mate. He's had his time. You know, he's ugh, just. It's up to him if he wants to keep fighting. He take punishment in that end of the day. It's up to him. But the heavyweight division is completely washed. These days. There's one fight to happen and one fight to happen only, and that's it. You got Jared Anderson get, getting arrested, mm. right? You get Joseph Parker getting recycled. You got you, know, you got one of the cash cows of the division fighting an MMA fighter. Who else we got? Um, who else got uh, got iced there recently? Uh, Jared Wilder Anderson. lost to Parker. Uh, Wilder, guy, uh, Wilder, you know nothing. Absolutely. Joyce listless. lost to Zhang twice. Joyce. Well, Jared um, Anderson did get iced. Yeah, Jared Anderson got iced by the police last night. Well, he's lost the plot, hasn't he? Jarrell Miller's got got arrested. Yeah, I mean, um, you had you had the who else you got? Um, Huey Fury's coming back though. Oh, I, 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 we'll wait for that one, mate. We'll wait for that one. What a fucking moment to jump on the park, (laughs) Jesus Christ! Hello, (laughs) (laughs) Joe Joyce. You got your man Matt Mudoff. Remember, did he not get iced in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Yeah, right. Matt Mudoff, the like heavyweight Kabayel. division is complete trash. Otto Wallen done nothing against Joshua. Jalalov fighting. Who cares bombs. about what Dilly White is doing, mate? And, yeah. ma- and the Manny Charstall apparently is still in the WBA uh, fold for a belt. It's washed. We don't need it. Dillian White versus Jamie TKV, Andy. Oh, and another thing, mate. Boeing Ben Shalom promotion. According to Ben, according to Ben Shalom, Martin Bacoli is getting getting ducked by the entire division. Martin Bacoli is the boogeyman, the biggest boogeyman since probably who in the heavyweight division. All of them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, White turn up on a Don King card. Oh yeah, yeah right. fighting if Jonathan like, Guidry. Don King, will, King will bring a card to El Paso or somewhere like that. Fighting Adrian Broner. <laughs> <laughs> Lordy. No, it'd be, it'd be, <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, Dillian yeah, White, Rob, yeah. you've, you've joined yeah. us at a good time here. Go ahead, Dominic, sorry. Go on, no, you go ahead, Rob. Dillian no, White's I, innocent, Rob. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, fucking, who, who would have foreseen that it would have been eventually come out that it was... Um, a banned supplement or a, a contaminated supplement, wasn't it? Well, not a banned supplement. Come on, Rob, give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Um, who's cleared him in this? Has this been you, Cad? Texas licensing and regulation. So, some expert, we're all experts. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, just when you thought you'd escape Dillian White, like, you might have never had to see him again. Back he comes in time for Argus. Um, for a fucking for a return to the ring, who's he gonna fight? Derek Chisora. This time it's personal. Um, well, he, he has to fight. Just, you see, the, the other times, it, it was only... Now we've got Derek Ward, Chisora. Those previous times that he fought Dylan White, it was only Derek Minor Skirmish, Chisora. Oh, Derek, right, I see. Minor Altercation, Chisora, you see. It's Derek, Derek Ward, Chisora, you see. Derek's yep. spelt differently now as well. Have you noticed, Dominic? It used to be CK, and now it's only K. Yes, that's right. That's a very... It's a different man. New man. <laughs> You should call it. You should call it David Hay or something like that. David Hay probably needs some cash by this point after his triple experience. Well, David Hay, yeah. David Hay, Dillian White. Seen, I've seen stranger things happen in the last fucking. Do you know what I mean? Bitcoin Rodney's over there. You know what I mean? He could fucking end up on a on a. I don't know. Like it depends. He fancy how... David Hay. He fancy some of that YouTube money at some point, eh? He's yeah, quite you fancy. Would have he'd fucking, that. You would have thought he'd fucking. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I think the 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 Dillian White situation is. It depends. He's always been. A commodity for Eddie, but in the sky days, you know, he flips over the tables. He fucking had a go against Anthony Joshua. He used IFL to to basically make himself, whether you like it, you feel it's justified or not based on his ability, but a version of a pay per view star. Um, and he was on a God knows untold amount of pay per views between fight getting paid to fight guys like Joe Parker, um, Rivas. Chisora a couple of times, Pavek and all these fights were on pay per view. So at one stage he was, he held a bit of value for Eddie Hunt. Um, he was a a, a, com- a commodity to him, and he was able to sell pay per views. I think his time has passed in that regard. I don't know if he's as much of a draw, and it seems His Excellency is, is controlling the shake up in the heavyweight. So it's hard to see a path for Dillian White. Having said that, if he's licensed and ready to go. You could easily see him popping up in Riyadh on one of these super fucking heavyweight battles well, in the desert or whatever. So well, that's the thing, Rob. You know that's you know what we're talking about. He's only been licensed in Texas, and what, the reason 
based on, on you're just saying about turning up on the Saudis, the thing that I've wondered about is what sort of attitude do the Saudis have to licensing people who, who have just made honest here. mistakes? What are you trying to say, Dominic? Mm. Uh, <laughs> like Connor Ben, for example, there, I don't think it's coincidental that Connor Ben hasn't yet turned up on one of these Saudi shows. Well, Miller did, didn't he, Joel Miller? Yeah, but that was he had sure he admitted did. he had admitted his. Yeah, and I suppose. He had served as that was his I'm first talk- mistake. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking about guys, Steve, that haven't haven't admitted that you know they haven't accepted that they failed the test. Yeah, fair enough. You know those those sort of cases that they're like, you know, Ben's doing what Baumgartner's doing. They're sort of denying that they've been, um, you know, they've basically failed the test. That's what they're doing. Um, or that you know they're saying that it's um, you know, it's someone else's fault, but um. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if the Saudis are, are, are going to be holding out too much, too many olive branches to people who have uh, failed tests. Someone well, else's fault. Well, Eddie Bush has washed fault. his hands. That sounds and... like Brendan Rogers to me, by the way. And... <laughs> <laughs> He's right on that one, wasn't he? It's so Eddie... fucking early. Your news are fucking shocking. Eddie washed his hands with Billy and Lou, didn't he? <laughs> He yeah, says, oh, yeah, we spoke a couple of times, even though he'd like had him on seven pay-per-view headliners. That's as Rob said. He, he served his purpose. White served his purpose now. He, he's, he's, Eddie's, Eddie's already milked him for, you know, Eddie knows that he can afford to wash his hands of him now. Well, but Eddie made that apparent. <laughs> Eddie's still on that one. <laughs> Eddie made that apparent that... Um... At the time that you know, basically when he got when he popped it, he was like because before it was like what you got to understand, Coogs is A samples and B samples and blah blah blah. And everyone was like, oh, maybe he might be innocent. And then this time he got pop- he popped it, and he was like, listen, Dylan White looks after himself. He manages himself. I don't have <laughs> fucking nothing to do with this guy. And if he's found guilty, we wait and see what happens. But uh, if he's found guilty, he can fuck off, basically. So, well, he's innocent now, Rob, so he can come back again. Yeah, I don't know if he wants him uh, back though. Does he? It's like. He, he, he needs to learn to read, though. He needs to read the ingredients and supplements in future. I mean, he's just going what? around dipping his hands in fucking contaminated supplements all over the. Oh, well, what are the chances that that would happen still... to you twice yeah, in a lifetime after you dog... already previously popped well, yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it's... feeding his dog steroids and that as well, mate, by using un, you know ungloved hands to mix it in the it's dog. Just food, lucky, man. I just I, honestly, man. He's, he's just a bit of a clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Probably licked his fingers afterwards to put washed his hands or something like that, you know. Hey, you He's definitely not. Never... <laughs> For his limitations, you know, Rob was listing all the pay per views that he was involved in with Eddie on Sky. Like for 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 such a limited fighter, he has done. He has earned, I think, a, a serious amount of dough. I mean, he's living out in Portugal. You don't do that if you're if you're not, uh, you know, when. Swimming in a few bob, like. Oh yeah, he's made money, and well, considering he was probably fucking doped up to his eyeballs for his whole career, he's really yeah. fucking robbed the bank, yeah. hasn't he? Because if he yeah. was fucking that bad when he was fucking juiced, it all started with Imagine. AJ, didn't he? Yeah. You know the AJ fight, Rob, and then yeah. Yeah. no, I said, I said it countless times. He ma- he did brilliantly for a guy of his ability. He's a former fucking kickboxer who happened to fight AJ in the amateurs and beat him, and that's how he got his path to fucking to the check, like because he's not a considered a fucking threat or a dangerous heavyweight anywhere else in the world. And didn't he both... pop Rob and that fucked up the AJ rematch? Am I saying that right? Yeah. That's what I think. Uh, that's yeah. the fourth, this, is, this is the one. This is this, is this from this one, right? Yeah. Ah, this is this is this related case. This is but he no, he po- yeah. So he popped before that, and he served a ban. Then he yeah. popped after Rivas, and after that was just a big misunderstanding with the dogs or with dogs. And now there's been another big giant misunderstanding. It's fucking. <laughs> Just what are the chances that that will happen to you, you two had, times you had, in you had, such a short time? I don't know. He had the kickboxing one. He had the one very early in his career. I think that was one. Oh, that was over the about. counter one. Was oh, he had a kickboxing one as well. Yeah, had, this is his fourth one. This and is. And then he had, the, he had the one after oh, the one he claimed for the steroids, <laughs> and then knew this, knew the one for the AJ fight. Mm-hmm. Remember AJ came out and said, oh, I'm done with this guy. He ain't getting the payday. Prematurely, he said, I'm done with him, Andy, clearly, as we found out today. AJ jumped the gun yeah. a bit there. Should he need to give him a chance? Eating his words now, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I dog food, baby. Oh, dear. Uh, Rob, what did you see over the weekend? Um, Fuck all. What was on over the weekend? I'll tell you what I Lies. saw. Lies. Ray Ford, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. That was good, actually. It was um, good, wasn't it? And then I saw fucking that Maddie was over in Puerto Rico watching Jay Paul <laughs> <laughs> knock a guy... Knock a guy out. He almost landed some of the shots that he knocked him out with as well. I see, that guy's an Uber, I see that guy's an Uber driver, apparently. <laughs> well, 
he his dropped Jake is, Paul off and then got knocked out and then took him home again. Yeah, his position is safe. I think he'll be back in the fucking Uber to, by tonight. He probably took the Uber back last night after the fucking <laughs> knockout. Um, and then Serrano and that. I got to be honest with you, I got I got wrapped up. I don't know if he's a cover yet. I got wrapped up in the fucking the Garcia uh, yeah, Haney shenanigans. Have you been talking about that yet? No, no we're, yeah, we're we're we'll probably catch you on yeah, so yeah, that's all I caught up with. But I'm I'm all in now. Like I'm fucking. Oh, I'm gone in. I was fucking. I was. I didn't give a shit about this fight. Now I'm fucking invested heavily. Floyd's Floyd doing his bit to kind of shake the tree of you. Oh, I fucking the sub providing the subplot is always like what a fucking <laughs> horrible human Floyd Mayweather must be. Think about it. Like he he. It's not, and I think I thought for a while, like maybe it's just fucking young black fighters, but it's not. It's Canelo as well. It's anybody else who's a fucking potential heir to the throne who went, who went before him or after him. He'll find a way to disparage him. You hear him? He's fucking talked in the back in the past so badly about fighters, um, about Muhammad Ali. Anytime Ali's name is mentioned, he mentions the fact that you know Ali didn't retire with his faculties. So that's something he has on him. So he can't be the greatest because look how he ended up. He took too much punishment. There's nothing cool with take a punishment. Robinson wouldn't have beat him, he said, over the years, different times. Then he goes into the future. Like, it's like any f- fighter that is on the trajectory, he's all over him at the start. And in the minute they become on the cusp of actually being something, he turns on him. You've seen it with Adrian Broner. You've seen it with Tank. you see it with Devin Haney, who he was working with just to fucking wind up Tank in the first place. And then now he's turned on him and and start fucking providing sparring footage and stuff to Ryan Garcia. He's a, he's had fights. He had his McGregor fight on like two weeks before Golovkin and Canelo, I believe. Right, the times yeah, he's like right. a fucking. And then, she, she, when Pacquiao was riding high in there, what would they do? He would always appear when like during a Pacquiao fight week about something. Yep. Yeah. Any always reputational fight. rival, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Juan yeah, Manuel is... Marquez. He seems to be such a fucking lonely, lonely, sad old man. And Haney called it right when he said he's a miserable old get like that doesn't want to fucking see anybody do do any good. But leaking the sparring footage and giving it to Ryan Garcia. I mean, Garcia is this is a separate one because Floyd is just providing the subplot here with his antics, like and the way he's carrying on. But I think the person that's coming out with the most fucking credit out of it all is Haney. Like, yeah, I think so. Because Haney yeah. fucking in that sparring footage, he fucking hung in there. Like he's getting tanked, but he fucking hung in there. And apparently he finished the sparring and Davis quit. So I was eight years ago. And he's 16. Yeah, he's 18. Ah, he's really, he's like a, a teenager, like you pressure know. cooker environment. Uh, there's no shame in that. So that footage is not humiliating him. But obviously, these things are different when fellas' egos are at play and blah, blah, blah. And you know, the stuff gets hyped up and tank is providing another subplot because he's waiting in the wings or whatever. But in terms of the fight itself, I see it like there's something fucking I said I said it a few weeks ago like he's divorcing the missus and all the next day this fella is on the primo carnero he is fucking it's mm. not just fucking it's not just drinking fucking weed or whatever like he alleged at the at the press conference he said yeah man I smoke I drink I drink and I smoke weed so what and I thought so what like so do I but I'm on the pod I'm not fucking fighting for the fucking light, or the lightweight title you know what I mean uh, there's levels like I think he's trying too hard with the, the trying to be kind of the blase attitude. He's just a for, it's just a really intriguing ca- uh, character and case because if Ryan Garcia had had Tank's resume, he'd be the biggest thing in boxing. I got to laugh at uh, Haney a wee bit though when he's he's kind of throwing the shit or or, or the shade at, at Garcia about how he's behaving and the, the drug taking and the alcohol and that. End of the day, you know, Haney's the one who's been on social media throwing the cash about, you know, about the bitches and the Benjamins and the, the, the jewellery and all that. I mean, that's not really promoting, you you know, good things to the youth. Same, get, same with Garcia at the end of the day and that as well, I must say. But you know what I'm saying? I, I get you. I get you. But I think Haney's stock is after going up a little bit. The fact that he went fucking yeah, Trent to Australia twice. He lost. Yeah, he's a fighter. He's a fighter. He's a fighter. He's f- and aye, he's going to fight. Out, and Garcia is selling wolf tickets to the whole fucking world, isn't he? Like, because he retired after beating Luke Campbell, basically, because they're not buying his mental health fucking break either. Like, he basically said, he gave away on himself because he's saying in the press conference after the Luke Campbell fight, he got carried away drinking and gambling. I'm sorry, like, this is not going to work out. Do you know what I mean? I saw you, you, he retired too early. Like, he retired when he was 24 and he's still a prize fighter without winning a world title. Like, you know, he's fucking... Turning into yeah. Oscar without the resume, I think, like current Oscar. And he, yeah, yeah, and he there's, came there's, into there's, that. There's a need there. There's a want. I, I don't know if it's a cry for help, but there's something. He's something addicted well to off. the limelight. He's addicted to the limelight. He's got. He's made too much money. He's got fucking. Apparently, like he was entitled in his. You know, he makes. He, he plays the the sob story about his upbringing, like all fighters and all that. Like not not too many fighters had it easy coming up, but. Um, 
from what the, the Haney he's actually they're, do, they're doing a spectacular job when you're making fucking Bill Haney look good at a press conference you're making him like like a fucking voice of reason like you're fucking doing a, re- a fucking you gotta be really fucking up somewhere along the way like um, but the, the kind of stuff alleging that Bill Haney used to be a pimp and he got all that from Mayweather as well allegedly but the, um, Garcia looked visibly on something like visibly on the come down he was fucking he was like Shane McGowan at the press conference man it wasn't pretty like it was fucking you know it was one of those ones where it's cringeworthy like he and it just he said his voice was affected by the he was doing some promo for the zone and part of it was involving him, him, him he's screaming at the camera a couple of times and that's apparently how he's lost his voice whereas yeah. uh, Haney's are saying that it's the old chica that he's been on that sounds like the fucking same excuse the fellas give me a fucking ten o'clock in the morning when I see him. I fucking <laughs> when I see him and I get the coffee and they're after me down all night. Oh, no, I don't know. It's a bit of a call. Let me hear him. <laughs> um, hey, you here's, here's an interesting question, Rob. If, if Garcia was if his head was in the place where it needed to be, if he wasn't, you know, suffering under all this chaos that's around him at the minute, do you think? Do you think he would have a serious chance against Haney? Because I don't. I I think even if it was. The best Ryan Garcia could possibly be. I would still become. I would still become. What is the best Ryan Garcia? We can see the. There's the question, right? The tumble. The the tumble. He's all got dropped though. Exactly. The best he's shown, and Andy's right. He's the best he's at at his very best. He still had his his chin hanging out in the air. Now whether he goes from that trajectory and he learns and he starts to fucking improve and blah blah blah. After that, if he's like kept himself on the right path or whatever, you don't. We won't know. We never know. But he took two years off. He fucking came back to the tank fight, which was basically a no no lose fight for him because he came down to thirty five for it, uh, diminished himself. He didn't look like he took it fucking seriously. He came out and swung for the fences in the first round. He had no plan. And the thing about Garcia, that's the most worrying for his career, and it's gonna te- it's gonna tell in the ring, all, every time from here on in is the fact that every fucking trainer he's been with says he doesn't listen. Right, so. Derek uh, James wasn't telling him to do that fucking shoulder roll the last time out. Uh, um, fucking Eddie Reynoso said he doesn't listen. Canelo said he doesn't listen. He doesn't train. All these people. There's footage of him early on in the amateurs where some you see it floating around on on social media where he's doing a drill, and the guy on the drill is fucking telling him like, "Put your fucking hand back up," <laughs> and he won't. He's just not. He just he just does his own thing. So he has too many fucking yes people around him. Apparently, him and the man call all the shots. Remember the man publicly renegotiating his Golden Boy contract very early in his career before he'd even won fucking 10 fights, I believe. Like they were, because they know the numbers. So they, to answer you, like uh, the best version of Ryan Garcia, we don't know what it is. I fancy Haney to beat him now. But what I will say on the flip side of that is if they'd have just padded his record, give him a fucking couple of gimme world titles, he would be the fucking face of the sport because he has it all in terms of the look, the draw, the fucking, the wider appeal. Yes. If, and if he'd have just done anything in the ring, he could be bigger than Canelo. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's what you were saying to me the other day, Rob. But and I agree with it. And um, the point I would make, though, is I don't think it was Golden Boy's decision to put him in with Tank. I think he drove that decision himself. He agreed to all these conditions that Golden Boy and Hopkins were telling him not to take. But that's what that's why I think he's fucking. He went into that like he has a bit of Jack in him. I yeah, because he come out of that trying to save face, saying, "Oh well, Tank diminished me so much, so I wasn't at my best, so it doesn't matter." Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. And I think I think he quit against Haney. I think I think Haney will make him quit, and that's fucking saying as much because Haney doesn't punch too much. But I think he'll make him jack somehow. But the thing is, Haney looked much better, and than he has looked at you know, considering how he kind of fight fought at one thirty five. Sorry, and then come to one forty. If, yeah, if, if he does what he does against Progre, he'll fucking smash him. Looks, big more, fr- looks more fresh, looks more active as such. Doesn't seem to grapple as much as well. To be fair, so he lives the life, doesn't he? Ah, there's that as well. He seems to be loves a clean a clean life as such, mm. and. As I say, he's been fighting at a higher level. He's been winning at a higher level. He's been buzzed up and come through the storm at the same time. Whereas Rob just mentioned there, he's uh, Garcia's jacked it when 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 the weather started getting a wee bit too heavy for him. You know. Thing is, well, I, I, sorry, Dominic. I was, no, no, say, ahead, I was going to say Andy quick quickly. I mentioned the comparison to Oscar De La Hoya, but yeah. Oscar throughout his career, not only was he achieving things, but he did a good job of keeping a lid on all the shit, really. Yeah. I know it started to sort of seep out towards the end of his career, and then we've seen the we've all seen the documentary. We all know what he was hiding, but he still managed to keep that sort of facade, didn't he? That grin, and a lot of the t- throughout his career, he was winning big fights, he was winning major world titles, and he kept a lid on a lot of the shit, the drugs, the booze, the party, and the women until after he retired. 
True, but then would Oscar have been, you know, if you, if you like maybe put Oscar into this era and that, exactly. he wouldn't have got away exactly. with any of that stuff, mate. Exactly, Oscar, there'd be Oscar. phones and cameras everywhere. Yeah, we oh, mate, that he the would be, in, he'd yeah. probably be, yeah. you know, can you imagine all that carry on after the, after his wife and that, and, yeah. you know, the amount of women that he was apparently sleeping with? Oh, my God, man. Well, Gossi is addicted to his phone. I mean, he can't live and breathe without fetching it out every five seconds at every True. press conference or interview. You know, he lives, he's been bought, it's a different era to us, isn't it? He's brought up on social media. Yeah, that's what he keeps referencing he, internet he, he, metrics. As well. Aye, well, that's right because at the end of the day, you know, before he was even even it was in the world title picture as such, and that he was he was he was grim for this moment. He was grim to be this. He was he was a TikTok star. He was on Instagram. He had all these all these big moments, etc. But just to go back to Oscar. I mean, you're right. Oscar somehow managed to compartmentalize all his issues outside of the ring. Focus on 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 the, on the subject at hand, and even I think we'd all even agree. As, as great as what Oscar was and what he achieved, what could he achieve if he wasn't into all that other stuff? Well, this is it. And yeah. Garcia is going to show what you can't achieve when you read all that other stuff because <laughs> you don't divorce a bitch just after having your baby the next day. That's a cokehead move. Like, he's up all night making that decision. Like, that's not one yeah. to just wake ah, up that's and going to come back on him as well. That's going to, yeah. you know, ponies coming for that one. Oh, God. It's he's going... coming in the white horses, mate. Aye. Uh-huh. So the alimony ponies coming in the other direction. They come and take that, uh, that cash to the other. To the other. Yeah, oh, like it's you know it's not good, and it and I think he has one foot out of the sport. To be honest with you, I think he's marketing this fucking. You see him doing all the press runs. He's doing the Breakfast Club. He's doing the Ariel. He's doing all those That's the extra stuff. He's he's going to be on the YouTube scene, isn't he? He says so he's already calling out Jake Paul. You can see it. He's one foot out of the sport. Like, I tell you what, you know, Robs, you read what you say. I mean, if you're making Bill Haney look good at a presser, you're doing something seriously wrong. Um, just one other point, Steve. Um, yeah. You know, Rob was talking about it there before. We we're talking about Ryan Garcia, about Floyd, and his sort of psychopathic inability to let anyone else have the limelight. But one of the guys in the chat there said that uh, was trying to defend Floyd and said he, he never speaks bad about Terence Crawford. But that's precisely the point because Terence Crawford has never threatened to be that big pay per view um, star that, you know, Floyd doesn't want anyone else to be as long as he can't be it. Good point. Um, so See what he'd have something to say about Crawford if he goes up and wins at 54 because he'd talk about how yeah. he fucking beat someone yeah. else at 54 and it's that yeah. watch. I think Crawford's still to come for him. I think it, it depends what Crawford does now over the next few years or so. It's make Plus, or break regarding Floyd's interest in Crawford, I think. He knows that nobody can get to him, but Crawford's probably the type of person that he wouldn't want to say something about because he might run into him, you know, that way. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to see it, exactly. He is, you're right there, Rob. He's a lonely man with a fragile ego. I tweeted it out during the week. He's, he's desperately un, unhappy, like. Yeah, like, how can it, like, what's the, what's the play for him there? What does he get out of taking that away from young fighters? By the way, young fighters who all looked up to him, like, Tank, fucking Haney, like, all of them all looked up to him, like, and he shits on Broner. They, they all say the same thing about him. He gets too close to him, and then he starts Broner to get jealous. Broner deserved it, though, to be fair. Eh? He, des- he deserved it, Broner. Well, Broner, Br- apparently Broner and him, um, their relationship they're became they're okay, frayed. Man. But it became frayed in the first place because Broner wanted to go home from his house. And Floyd didn't want him to go home. Like, and he was like, Floyd, I've been here for six weeks. Like, I want to fucking go home. I want to go back to Cincinnati. <laughs> and he was like, no. So he had to get his fucking sneaky flight out. And then that's where fucking Floyd got him. Floyd's like, oh, God, he had him locked in a dungeon. No, I thought he was going to go P. Then they were on that P. going to want a party, baby. Oh, man, as well. You want to see. I saw some interview with Floyd where he was trying to defend. He was trying to. This is the thing about Floyd as well. He's a for, for as much as he talks about his business acumen and all, he's a nitwit. Like he's a dummy. Like, do you ever hear him fucking try to answer a question? Your man said to him uh, about the P Diddy uh, allegation. Well, listen, that's P Diddy business. And first of all, I wasn't there, so P Diddy business is P Diddy business. But I just know if one girl was in that place, then she had a choice. And then your man was like, "Hold on, these allegations. I don't know if you're in the deposition. <laughs> these allegations are <laughs> are making out that people were." Drugged and raped, which of course is not a choice. Floyd and Floyd's like making a face, like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like you, man, can they? <laughs> he's such a fucking, he's a cretin. Like, I don't know, he's a, a tremendous <laughs> fighter, but he's one of the worst humans of all time. Like, what Michael Thompson, Rob says, Petty Boy Floyd. <laughs> you said it's Petty Boy Floyd, amazing. That's another one, man child. That's about the best. Like, MD, man child Floyd. That's I'm Petty the and the Heartbreakers. That's who he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's always been that insecure. We've rained off countless times that he's came out and just basically. I mean, remember the time when, when Gervonta Davis was kind of like trying to break out? Remember uh, when they did the, 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 uh, the Showtime pieces? Mm. And you, you, Floyd wouldn't even let Gervonta Davis talk. 
Men jag menar bara så inte det var fucking head to head with Frank Warren and fucking Liam. Det var det talk that time either. I remember like one of the very first times I heard Javon and Davis talk I said to myself I want to hear a bit more of him. He sounds quite you know you want to hear a bit more of what he's got to say because he seemed to be you know quite quite interesting shall we say. But no, Floyd wasn't having that. Floyd had to be sent a piece here. He had to have a, you know, yeah, we're going to make smart investments and all that type of stuff. Jumped that, in the know. ring after Badu Jack Jeez. had a draw one time as well and said, don't make this all about Floyd Mayweather, judges. And everyone's like, nobody's making it about Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Badu Jack always draws. This is fucking nothing to do with you. You fucking dig I, I know, I know, Rob. I know what, what is the only thing that can, that can reform Floyd at this late stage and get him to be so... You know, not much so better against other fighters. It's the return of Miss Jackson. That's the well, only. That's the other thing. You got to look all them women, all the, the oh, ones okay. that got away from, that tried to get away from the fucking Miss Jackson. Went to Nelly, Princess Love went to Ray J. Ray J was over in his house playing the piano, took his missus and fucked off. Like it's uh, a lot of people trying to get away from Floyd Mayweather. You know that way. And it's, um, and the one thing I'll, seriously I'll say in his defense, like he did have a messed up childhood. Like the way he was, I think, you know, I'm I'm not. Saying it excuses everything, but I mean, there's it, upbringing when you read about you know being in senior's arms when senior was being shot at. You know, it's a strange sort of. Um, yeah, but all those fighters he's shitting on all had fucking shit right. upbringing too. Like right. he's fucking. Right. Point. Good point. It's 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 funny. Like I was just thinking back when Floyd was saying or Rob was saying there about the way his, his interviews, and I was remembering back there around the height of the Mayweather Pacquiao thing back in 2010. You know when. The fight wasn't happening when everyone wanted it to happen, and Floyd was saying, "Take the drug test, the money, take the drug test." And you know, people like your man Kenny on ESPN were going at him in these interviews. And I remember it got to the stage where everyone would ask him these media interviews about the Pacquiao fight. When is it going to happen? And I don't know if any of you remember, but he would just answer a totally different question. He would say, "The weather's lovely today. Um, this I'm is a hell a of a fight. fighter. Smart investments. Something totally unrelated to the question he'd been asked." And, I'm on, I suspect that it was sort of Heyman or whoever Heyman was around him and you know, just coaching him how to deal with these guys. He would just answer literally. He would dream up a question. But and then he'd crack, he crack because already the Rogan man was on fucking satellite radio one time talking shit about him and he fucking rang in to defend himself <laughs> and told everybody <laughs> that they don't know shit about boxing. Who did they fight and fucking what he earned for X, X fight and that fight. But... um. Yeah, I mean, like he—he he, he just can't let go, can he? Like, and then the fact that these exhibitions that he does don't draw flies, like the big Jake Paul was nothing. None of these fights. Well, that last one him. wasn't it, Rob? Against that Chalmers. I mean, that was really showed that it's it's dead in the water, isn't it? That and was it was embarrassing for him. Imagine him seeing. Imagine like a good, great fighter that he was doing that. Like, do you know what I mean? Just because of his ego, he's attached to every fucking kind of you know internet scam. <laughs> So kind of make a few bob. He's just a fucking bizarre character. Like, what a fucking sure. nut, nutcase. Like, I was mentioning it to you there, Rob, the other night. I think one of the guys said it in the pod last week or the week before. When when Bivol beat Canelo, wasn't he on the internet straight away posting his bet and slip saying his bet that he had on Bivol beating Canelo? That's yeah, and th- then really went sour on Canelo another time about... Um... Oh, I posted after, yeah, about, about uh, how he was easy work and all this and fucking, do you know, everyone knows that Canelo was only a kid or whatever and he fucking could have stopped him rightfully, but, but I don't know, it's just, it's a fucking strange word, but it's making me more, more interested in Haney Garcia. I think Haney's going to fucking win widely, but now I want to see fucking Haney and Tank next, like, has to be next after all this fucking shit talk. Haney and, Haney and Tank yes. have to fight, like, Especially if Haney goes out and he beats Ryan Garcia on a big platform, big big pay per view numbers, and the fight does well. Like if Haney beats him and looks good, it has to be Tank next. Like, hopefully so. Uh, just cleaning up from the weekend, Andy, um, over in Puerto Rico, uh, Jake Paul. I, I I only saw highlights of that to be honest. Though. I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I only saw the not the highlights afterwards, the sort of replays and stuff. But the Serrano thing was the main mm-hmm. one. I don't want to dig out uh, the the Nutters group here, but this was quite a funny one. I thought Bell you the weak territory. Matty sitting there at 25 to 3 in the morning our time waiting <laughs> for Serrano to come out. I Jay puts him. in this and Matty's like, what? I, may, I messaged him asking, said, did you get your money back? <laughs> he never responded to me. <laughs> I know he's listening. I know he's listening right now, but I, I, I've pieced it back a wee bit right now. For what I've been reading or you know, and a couple of people on, on the forums or whatever that were saying as well, apparently she has went for a haircut or a hairdo before the weigh-in. Now, if you if you look at the weigh-in, she wore sunglasses 
all the way through the, the way in, including the, uh, the face off, right? Allegedly, she went to the hairdressers, got it all tarted up, got some sort of hairspray, peroxide, whatever it is, in her hair. She's been out for a run afterwards. It's sweat is then ran into her, uh, into her, her eyes. It some, has some sort of irritation, or, you know, allergic reaction, whatever it is. And they have kept it quiet, apparently, to try and mask or to try and save the pay per view. Right. Well, you heard the fans, they weren't having it. So Jake Paul decided, like, okay, you're going to get your money back. You, you can't do that in Puerto Rico, man. You know, they, they, guys will, they guys will just chop you up, man, down there. Like, you, you can't really pull that stuff off. But this is to make her look good. Because that was a homecoming for her. But if it's true, she's had that issue for a couple of days before, or at least the day before the weigh in. And they've kept it quiet up to, I think it was after the Jake Paul's fight, I think. Right up until they're about to come into the ring. Right, well, okay. I, I thought it was after Jake Paul had fought, then the announcement came out that she wasn't going to be fighting. And then it all went <laughs> off. I was like, what the hell? Tito Trinidad's in the ring trying to calm everybody down. And there's Matty sitting there ringside, right, okay, we better get the first flight back to the States, man. Because it's so going to be man, crazy I, the ringside. I just, I just found this shit out right now. I'm so, oh, Matty, I'm fucking so happy for Matty. That's hilarious. Chicks with dig fucking flies to Puerto Rico see a fight. The woman's not even fighting at us. Amazing. Went to flew to Puerto Rico to see Jake Paul. But Amazing. Only in boxing could I could I could, could I can a hairspray possibly end a fight like that? That'll uh, turn Matty into a male chauvinist and rot Joe Kennedy will be left doing chick with egg on his own. <laughs> <laughs> I tell I tell you even better though. I tell you even better. One of the best comments I've seen in the weekend actually. So someone said Tyson Fury can't use that excuse to duck music anymore. <laughs> 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 I'm surprised though boys that they told the truth basically and said that I mean to own stupidity I, I, I said in the chat I'm surprised they didn't say oh like a bug got in her eye or something they well, literally told the truth it was her own stupidity that the fight got cancelled she, she never took the sunglasses off so we don't know how we always happened we don't know the extent it was it was a, it was a dodgy kind of dodgy response that was given in the ring Boxing scene, I've got an article up now. They're kind of asking, look, this came too late in the day to make an announcement, by the way. It should have been told. You know, they went through with the way and everything. She was, she was playing the game. She made way. She One made of the boys way. said it was a money shot in the eye or something. You should have given me a money, <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> Matty. <laughs> Matty in the glory Matty did it. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have missed, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but come on I mean oh, I hairspray seriously hairspray <laughs> oh seriously it's up there we slipped in the shower isn't it that one with all oh, was God, it Gonz- who was it Gonzalez what was that guy called it was the guy who was fighting Frampton now how Alejandro Gonzalez they don't get murdered no, eventually no no that was a, diff- it was a different guy the Gonzalez, Alejandro yeah. it was Alejandro uh, what was his name Steve oh, Gonzalez God, was it though? Was no Gonzalez oh. was the one he actually fought in Texas Gonzalez is the one who that Steve Bunce told us was yeah. found in the back of a I well, won't repeat no kid <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gutierrez. Oh, God, what do you call that guy? Gutierrez. Gutierrez. That's it, Gutierrez. Gutierrez. That's to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Flores. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I was... See what happened? Came out, came out, I was when I got told the news about that. The Shanko Rod. <laughs> that's right, he's you drove him, weren't you? Don't be like, that's a surprise, he's always up there. <laughs> you were there, aren't you? Weren't you? <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Ken, Ken, who phoned you tell me, dude? I remember, I remember you having a Guinness. I remember you having your Guinness in the, in the Europa upstairs uh-huh. at the bar after, after the rain. Can you phone me? A Republican phone to tell me the news. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Andy? I'm on the shank. What did you use a code word? Don't, don't, don't. Oh, God. That was crazy, wasn't that it? That was a crazy weekend right in that, man, because we we're, we're, we're so annoyed. So what happened is we all, we all just like, I think we all went off in like small groups and that. Well, I said, like, okay, where are we going to go? I said, like, we'll go down in the shank hole, see if there's any pubs down there, which there was. But then when, 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 because uh, obviously Carol had missed weight, hadn't he? Yeah. And that's when word got out yeah. about the tax man situation. Yeah. And the fight wasn't off at that point. It wasn't until, like, say, like, maybe three or four hours later we got, we got word through. That's right. Fight was off. I'm like, what? Get back to the Europa quickly. And, of course, we're in the Europa. Everybody's there. And the faces are tripping. There's, like, I don't know, about 20, 30 folk in there, Dominic, at the time. Faces right. tripping everybody, man, at that time. I think uh, I think Carl had to be uh, restrained from... His, his old man had to restrain him from trying to go for one of Barry's sons. He was going to deck one of Barry's sons and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the old the old man had to restrain him, but um, yeah, Mick McElwee was there. He um he remembers it well. But um, 
just actually, um, I'm just looking at it here now, Steve. There was a question uh, put into the pod here by 20 past eight, and it was just touching on what Rob was saying about being intrigued about the the King Ray uh, and Haney fight. I'll just read the question out because I think I think we've most, more or less touched on it. But mm. anyway, the question is, um, is anyone else comparing Garcia's meltdown to Teo Lopez where he came out with one of his best performances against Taylor when everyone thought he was mentally gone or is Garcia way worse? No, because yeah. I went for that one, right? But if Garcia is pulling the fucking Kaiser Souza here, Daniel Day Lewis has nothing on him. You might as well get him down on the fucking ground, kicking a football with his left foot because he's a method yeah. actor. He's coming into the fucking thing, horse, looking like he died two weeks ago, fucking steaming with his smell of drink off him. I don't know, man. I yeah. don't know. I think he's turning into Tiafimo, but not in the ring, but out of the ring, Tiafimo, yeah. by the looks of him. He's gone <laughs> mad, hasn't he? It, it, it's quite, it's, it's, I was just thinking about it earlier, and it's so hard to sort of decipher. Well, fact from fiction, there's so there's such a circus. There's so much swirling around it. You don't know what's Lopez. What's real. Lopez's issues, but as as mental, I think Garcia as a combination of like a, a serious. Well, obviously you've got you, they've got some traits with the personal life a wee bit kind of like because because of the misses and the kids or whatever and that. But Garcia, he start bringing in drugs and alcohol into the situation on top of that with Garcia, which we didn't see we see with Lopez as such or here anyway in in in, in that regard. I think Garcia's a wee bit off the kind of reservation compared to Lopez in that regard. Someone was saying why is Derek James getting involved with this, but it's he's the trainer, it's, isn't he? He's the trainer, but I mean it's it's the coin. Like you know, these guys are, you know, it's, it's easy, it's easy money. You know, it's a big event. You know, he's going to get a slice. It's um. Alex Bellotti yeah. says way worse. Garcia is done, man. People don't realise what's happening. Unfortunately, Lopez just does his confidence issues in sp- himself, sporting wise. That's it. And you can argue that... Yeah, you there's the expert that, spoken. Well, another you subplot. Argue. Sorry, Dominic, go ahead, dude. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Rob. I know, and I was going to say another because I'm all in now, right? So I've been watching all the promo and that. And on Ariel Hawani, who's actually... Who's, he's a I good don't mind guy. him, by the way. I yeah, don't mind a, him. He's a good lad to have interview on boxing stars or crossover stars in America because he doesn't ask the same fucking questions that everybody with a fucking boxing yeah, media pass asks, you know, when they're asking about if the way... Dana hates him as well for that. And, yeah, but he was he was getting some good stuff for, out of Haney, but he asked him about Boxer Size Ben. And apparently fucking he hasn't bombed out Boxer Size Ben at all. He's still a massive part of his team. Him and of Lee course. Wiley uh watch every uh unrivaled amount of work of, of tape. They watch all the sparring sessions, they come up with dossiers on everybody and um unrivaled. yeah, Haney was yeah, Haney was really singing fucking boxer size Ben's praises like that last year it was legit, but important uh important part of his camp and then him on he was like well, why is he not in your corner? He's like, well, they can't come over right now. <laughs> just like, wonder why. Um, hey, oh, well, Rob. Captain Casual you, says Garcia's pissed he missed out on the ladies' night at the Devonish a few weeks back. That's a niche gag. Ben's there in Saudi, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I don't know. We can't yeah, go to right, America because... anyway because of some possible sanctions against. Yeah, uh, of course. Against them. Uh, uh. What are you tra- What are you trying to insinuate, Rob? <laughs> I think it's clear as day. He <laughs> <laughs> was saying to Ariel Hawani, "Shut the fuck up, man, will you?" He's like, "You can't come over if you've been over this." Like, well, yeah. Why is he not in your corner? Um, but yeah, I, mean, I don't. But I, I think he's he, guys like him are good having. Yeah, they're just fucking big. Not asking the same shit that all the fucking box of media asked. Like it was some decent stuff in there. Like I can remember him actually. You know, when he asked a question or whatever, like, he, he kind of then tries to kind of like push it a wee bit or kind of like kind of push for a better response. Or something I, I remember. I remember seeming to seem to recall Dana White meltdown with him a couple of times, but I think Leonard Ellerby during the the, the Mayweather McGregor fight was getting a bit kind of exasperated with him as well because of the kind of questions he was asking him. But he's but different see- compared to the other ones, like. Yeah, see, he was on the Breakfast Club as well, and they kind of called him on some of his bullshit. Like, but he was, he was. Fun. It seemed again like he was drunk. He was turned up or whatever. He's on the radio, and he was like, "Yeah, I was negotiating this fight with Devin and Devin." And I said, "Get off my phone, bitch!" And then Charlemagne, the presenter, was like, "I don't believe he said that. <laughs> let me see your, let me see your phone." <laughs> and he was like, "He went through a text message. Turns out he hadn't said that at all. Like, was something similar to that." <laughs> he's like, "All right, so we caught you out in lie one. You know that way. It's just he's." He's not there, like is he? He's fucking. He hasn't got it upstairs. He's a bit like big baby Jared Anderson. Hi, hi. The great American hopeless. Great American dope. He's coming in value of the week. Don't worry about that. 
Right, let's move on, Maybe boys. He can come again. He can come again, indeed. And like Jade, episode 562. Uh, Rob's here, Dominic's here, Andy's here. Let's have a look through the chat quickly. A uh, shout out to Sam Eggington. Good fight with our boss, Burrow, on Friday night. Um, that's all we'll say about that. Alex Blotti's in the chat. Andrew Thicket, Michael Thompson, William McAllister, Johnny is with us as well. Matty was hanging around. Al- Alex Bellotti sounds like someone at Ozzy be tipping for an area title, don't he? Have <laughs> 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 you seen him, Alex Bellotti? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Ryan Deal sent this earlier question for the pod. Will Matty spend his Serrano uh, refund entirely on rum or a draw parlay? <laughs> For the Saudi card next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. He's in the chat, is he, buddy? I see his name. He was, he was hanging around. He was there, I. He was there. Campbell responsibly with Matty, that's what I say. Right, let's get on to that then. Might as well chat about it. Um, Friday evening, we might do a post fight pod. We might not see what Mrs. Wellington uh, is up to. Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngarnu. Andy, 27 and 3. Joshua, Nort 1. Is Francis and Um I think Joshua Andy is going to do what Fury should have done, and this is why it's such a savvy move because they're all going to know now what Ngarnu does, how he moves, what he does with his hand, what he does with his head, what he does with his feet, and they'll be ready to step on it. I'm going to go out on the limb here, Andy, and say that AJ is going to dish out some punishment on the big man. What do you think? Um, I've been kind of sitting on the fence with this one, mate. Um, I, I, I suspect Joshua wins. I just, I, I don't know what, you know, what method. I, what makes me kind of a bit kind of, because of the the, the way Wallen fights, that kind of counter punching style doesn't really have the dig. I, I understood why Joshua was more on the front foot and he was more, you know, being more aggressive and his, his power was 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 a devastating effect at that point. But I just think he might be a bit more kind of respectful than Gano because he has he has got that size and if he does feel or just step onto a shot. Doesn't want to get too too like a days ago or get too slack, so I think he will show a bit of respect early doors. But I think he'll just sit on his jab, mate. To be fair, I think he'll just use that wee bit better polished boxing ability that he's got. Doesn't really need to do anything really other than that, and then just you know pick. Just just what is it? I just want to see here. Is that a ten rounder? Right? It's a ten rounder, so you could easily just pick a weight on possibly, and then maybe step on step on a wee bit, and maybe drop some more right hands in behind, and maybe get a late stoppage. Um, I just think. Then with the way then Gano throws shots, and I just think Joshua would need to be slightly wary. I mean, he's open to hooks and that as well. Um, but interesting, but I, 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 I suspect that Joshua wins. Uh, I was going to go when I first heard the fight. I suspected Joshua was going to win by stoppage, um, but I think he would try and make it. As you say, probably try and make a statement as well. So I'll maybe change it to a late stoppage, possibly. <clears throat> I think Steve's still relieving himself there, so I'll. Um, oh, I, 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 he, re- he, he must really love Andy's breakdown of his fight. He's <laughs> uh, <laughs> time to get back anyway. <laughs> but, uh, no, well, I don't know what else you want to, I can say. Really, to be fair, I mean, like, again, he's getting this fight purely based off as, as, as to how bad Fury looked, right? We, we kind of suspect that Fury didn't take the fight seriously. Um, some of us think also there, there, there's a bit of wear and tear there as well. Could be a bit of uh, you know clowning about as, as as per usual with with Fury and that, and he almost paid the price for it. I think Josh was going to look at it a bit more, kind of like, okay, this guy needs to be respected a wee bit more differently because you know he showed that he can. He is he's, he's a bull, like he's strong as anything. Maybe he doesn't have the tank, but he, if he lands, I think he, he he could definitely buzz you up. But um, I just don't think he's got that. I don't think he's just got that that finished product really to kind of finish Joshua off. I just don't see it. And I don't think he can sustain it for, you know, to win what minimum six. Well, he needs to win six rounds. I just don't see him winning six rounds possibly against Joshua to win up in points either. Interesting mm-hmm. comment by Andre Thicket there, Steve, in the chat. It's about time. He says, and Garner will be stronger than Joshua in the clinch. I expect Joshua to win, but might be a few interesting moments. Yeah. Maybe a, a, a exhaustion accumulation might catch up with Ngarno, but strength strength wise, Dominic, he is he is a big strong unit, isn't he? I don't think he's ever been decked in the MMA or whatever the thing is he comes from. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know anything about his MMA career. I, I don't follow that at all. But um, I mean, he is a he is a big unit. But the one thing, the one question I had in my mind there, Steve, when Andy was giving his breakdown, was is this ten rounds or twelve rounds? Ten, I think. No, it's ten rounds, I. Yeah, well. 
I I think it's a uh, it either be points or uh, an edge stoppage in the last in the last two or three rounds. Um, I'm struggling to sort of get get interested in it. I mean, really interested. I mean, I'm I'm more interested in the undercard, um, Nick Ball's fight. But um, yeah, it's it's sort of very it's 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 the it's the clever move, isn't it? After after Fury struggled with him, um, uh. Yeah, I expect the Edge to win. They sort of get behind the job, play it safe, get the earmuffs on, um, keep everything very simple, um, and uh, just just put get the job in his face. Um, if he gets aggressive, too aggressive, and holds his feet just a, a fraction too long, that's where he can get clipped. One, two, um, maybe maybe a wee, a wee hook and a spin off. That's all he's going to do. Just as you say, keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it on the job. Keep it on the job. That's all he's going to do. Drop the right hand in there. AG's got a good job, by the way. Um, he does, yeah. Great, but it's a, it's a good job. Um, and good uppercut, too. Yep, and when he, when he lets the right hand go, he, he, he can let a lot of force behind it. He's got a decent left hook, but three basic shots is all he's got to do, and he wins the fight. It's all he's got to do. Keep out of trouble. Uh, what about this for Michael Thompson, Dominic? He says AJ is incapable of using dirty tactics or any veteran moves. So it is in his interest, isn't it, to keep it at range, keep it at distance, jab away? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Actually, you know, it, it's um, I was just actually thinking of Lennox Lewis when I was reading that comment from Michael Thompson, and you know, that's the sort of that is one glaring difference from someone like you know, maybe Rob want to talk about this, but you remember Lennox Lewis's knockout of Michael Grant when he held his, 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 he put his left hand on the back of Michael Grant's neck and held it in place for the big dirty uppercut to finish it. We things like that, that, uh, you know, you know, real pro moves. Um, uh, There is that sort of naivety. Uh, or... Ali would do it as well with Joe Frazier to try and stop the left hook coming and he would pull him down with the back of the head so he'd be off balance and he couldn't throw the left hook. Yeah. It's, uh, it's I, I sometimes wonder, Andy, was that uh, was that is that defect in AJ's game? Is that is that absence in his game? Is it some sort of consequence of the fact that the only you saw against get... Ruiz, mate. I I think, I think when, when when you see about a, a guy when when he, when he's badly hurt, yeah, as you seen him, he, okay, he took a knee for time to time. I, I can recall if he took a knee in that, but you heard you heard McCracken saying, "Look, well, use your jab." Get out, of, you know, run basically, just get out of distance. But he wasn't able to do that. He was, as a guy says, can he fight on the yeah. inside? He has got a decent uppercut, but he does that as, the, as part of his attack, really, if he's got you on the ropes. But he's, um, yeah. he hasn't got, was just... he hasn't got that James Tony about him, you know, or even, or even, you know, think of you know, the fight I was talking with Steve, the fact that the fight that Steve referenced a few weeks ago, Riddick Bow against uh, Jorge, Jorge Luis Gonzalez, and mm-hmm. you know, it was just another clinic of Bow on the inside, but. I was just going to reference the the suggestion that that you know AJ until relatively recently the only gym that he's known from an amateur through to a pro was really that up with Rob McCracken up there in Sheffield, and it's a very it's it's not the my suspicion is that they don't really teach that sort of uh, inside work um cheat tricks yeah. um you know you know what I'm talking about it's, it's if you listen to Richie Woodall in commentary it's that same school it's all about the straight punching. There's very little emphasis on the bent arm shots. You know, it's all very, um, very rigid. Very. Um... Yeah. The real, the real interesting part for me would be uh, this fight is if Ninganu, as it was, you say in the clinch. It's not so much what he can do in the clinch. It's because he has like trained as an MMA fighter to actually know how to clinch someone and actually walk you back. Yeah. You've seen Fury was having big issues with him in, in that regard. He, I think he underestimated this how strong he was. If Joshua. You, you know what I'm saying? If if he's able to then get, you know lean on Joshua, push him back, starts tiring Joshua. Out. I think I think a lot will depend on. I firstly, <laughs> talk to FMG. I know. <laughs> learn on the job. It's an Eddie, a staple of Eddie. Two time unified champion, learning on the job. <laughs> Mark Stanton, Dominic says that AJ can't hold. Look at him against Usyk. He was getting thrown around by a smaller guy. And Andrew think it thinks that he's going to go full Galotta. Which Galotta fight? <laughs> Is he referring to? <laughs> the, the, balls. Balls. The, the boys are all saying he, he doesn't throw punches like Rocky Marciano, but he's 18 stone. He's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? New breed of heavy. Uh, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say that Ngannou has a right chance because um, 
And I don't know if Fury has a cast iron jaw, but he seems to have a bit of a glass head. Uh, and Gano caught him around the, the side of the head, didn't he? And Wilder caught him around the side of the head that time um, in the first fight as well when he dropped him the first time, not the not the last round one. You know, maybe Ngannou lands on you, he can scramble you, but I'd be more concerned. I think AJ is more than capable of beating this guy over 10 rounds, but AJ over 10 rounds, we have to remember after fuck, what happens after six in every fight, he starts to blow. It doesn't matter who, who, who he's fighting, what the caliber of opponent is, whether he's in control, whether he's out of control. Once he gets past that six round magic number, the gas tank goes a bit and he looks like Dominic alluded to. He always looks discombobulated. Like he doesn't have that now to hold you. He's not going to wrap you up. He's not going to get your fucking, get your head in between his armpit and pull down on it and buy himself timing around. He doesn't have that in him. And I think it takes more out of him because of the way he's built. And that's why he doesn't clinch. I think that, that's why it always suits him to keep things long. So obviously with Ben Davidson, they would have done unrivaled work on the, only 10 rounds available of Ngannou <laughs> that there is to watch. Like, it's him versus Fury. And I understand, I was struggling to understand why they took this fight because I was thinking it's just high risk, low reward. Like, But the reward is really if you fucking go out and you start Ngannou and you say, you put yourself right back in the, in the, in the mix for the winner of Fury Usyk because, oh, look what I did to Ngannou and he had you, he had you rocked. So that's going to be the story, isn't it, from Eddie Harden once... AJ is victorious, and if he does it in style, then he's right back in there in the in the mix for the fucking the biggest fight in the world. Like so, you would hope AJ come through for the sake of the sport, but you know the way these things go, you don't even know if they're ever going to plan out the way you want them to. But I would say, like, I'd hope AJ would win, but I definitely see danger for him here. And Gano is a big unit. Like, I don't think you're going to going to be able to go out and blast him out if he is more credit to him. But he's a freaking nature. Like the guy's fucking. Rock solid. He's fucking taking the boxing late. He's fucking, he's somehow got his, he's an MMA guy who's got fucking two massive paydays against the two biggest heavyweights in the world. Two biggest named heavyweights in the world. Take away Usyk's fucking having the belts. He's not the same draw as Joshua and Fury. Like, and he's had a fight against, he's having a fight against each of them. So whether he's there on merit or not, he's there. And I still, I think he's going to be a bit of a problem for AJ if it gets past six. And I could see this, um, I could see AJ's fucking stock plummeting if he doesn't look fucking terrific in this fight. So I hope he does it. I hope he goes out, sticks to the jab, rocks him up a little bit, maybe gets the stoppage and finally, finally, finally gets this fucking uh, Fury fight provided Fury holds up his end of the bargain. Like. Dominic, interesting comment from from a YouTube troll Matt DG here. He says, uh, Davidson has Joshua working underneath again. Fury was missing everything over the top. I think AJ stops him and creates interest in him versus Fury. Uh, should he beat Usyk? Interesting about the, the underneath rather than over the top shots. Yeah, it's... Um, I mean, I was just looking at some of the comments in the chat there that are quite interesting. And one of the guys mentioned, that, again, I don't know this because I don't follow UFC, but they said in Ghana, you know, he's never been remotely close to being stopped in the UFC. And I think, anyway, I said in my comments that I could see AJ potentially stopping him late. And I think I would I would sort of go back on that and say if AJ wins, it'll probably be on points. Um, you know, in Ghana, he is, he's, he's, um, you saw in the Fury fight, he didn't look remotely bothered by anything. Fury, he's a beast like. He's a flipping unit, like he's. Um, I mean, I, I, on Marty's point about um, about what Davison's got him doing with um, throwing shots underneath. I mean, I think we were all agreed that Otto Wallen was very disappointing that night. Um, it's it's an interesting one. I, I my my belief that AJ will win is more going based on the idea that they've seen the Fury fight and they've they've, they've had the benefit of watching that and. You know they're not going into it totally blind. That's um, what I think. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, that's that's what I think. Hi, uh, Doctor FMG says that Ngarnu showed the composure that Volin couldn't. Volin's going to end up on chicks with dig with old Joe Kennedy. I think if he's not careful. Michael Thompson says he's rough, tough, rugged. No better place to leave that one there. On to the undercard then. Dominic, we'll start with you. Some good fights on the undercard. I know Madrimov Kabarnov's off, unfortunately. You've got this beastly Ukrainian heavyweight Novitsky is going in against uh, Torres. Justice Hooney, nice step up for him against Kevin Lorena. A domestic level fair for Aussie there. Jack McGann against Lewis Green. Mark Chamberlain against Gavin Gwynn. 
I know you're interested in Ray Vargas, Nick Ball, WBC featherweight title, and WBO interim world heavyweight title. This is the most intriguing fight on the card for me. Gilet Zhang against Joseph Parker. Zhang off the back of two wins over Joyce. Parker off the back of the win over Wilder. I'm going to hesitantly say here, Dominic, it's actually a really well put together card. It's a shame Majumov Kurbanov fell off because it's actually a good a good uh, undercard. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic. Um, I've I'd actually forgotten about all the other fights on the card other than the Nick Ball fight. I mean, the I heard earlier about Madrimov. I think Madrimov failed the medical, didn't he? Yeah, he did with the board. Yeah, that's just, that's a pity. But um, and who who did you say Gavin Gwynn's fighting? Uh, Mark Chamberlain is an undefeated. I think he's from Portsmouth, lightweight on the Frank sort of BT scene. Yes, yes. Um, and and I'd, I'd actually forgotten as well that that Parker and Jang was on this undercard as well. That's I'm I'm actually more interested in Jang Parker than I am the Edge if I'm being yeah, totally honest. Yeah, me too. I agree. Um, I, I would sort of. I must say, I think I would give the benefit of the doubt to the Big Bang. I think he's going to win. Um. I just say that because I just think Wilder was so out of it that night. Um, I I can't I can't bring myself to to read as much in the the Parker win as some people are. Um, so I think uh, Parker's a tough guy. You know, he's he's hard to stop. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But I mean, I mean, we know how tough Joe Joyce was, had a reputation for being before he went into the Zhele Zhang fights, and it didn't stop him from being um, broken up. Um, so I will say, I will say that Zhang, it's a funny one because I think the longer the fight goes on, I think Parker has more of a, a shout. I think the longer Parker can stay in the fight, if he gets into the second half of the fight, I could see Parker, you know, coming on strong late. Um, I think as well, Dominic, Parker's win over Wilder said a lot about where Wilder is mentally yeah. and physically. And Parker, we know what he is. And if Zhang, unless he gets old overnight, and I know people point to the renal failure and that, but that was only a one-off. Other than that, he showed pretty good bang. <laughs> Not like we said that. We only had a hard failure once, but he's... <laughs> he's bounced back. He's bounced he's back. back. He's bounced back from the old liver. And, and I think it's his fight to lose, Zhang. I think it'd be best for the division if Zhang just bangs Parker out late. I think it's definitely best for the division if Zhang wins. And I'll say, I'm going to actually go for Zhang, a mid-round stoppage, maybe seven or eight rounds. Yeah, six or seven. I was going to say the same as you, actually. It's not going to do nothing for the division if Zhang wins because he's not going to get the fight any of them anyway. <laughs> He'll have to fucking sit <laughs> out. So <laughs> the division will be where the division is while these three play it out at the top. Um, I think Parker did well against Wilder. I think he had a, his game plan was uh, was to close the distance. Wilder was firing over a lot, of, a lot over the top, and didn't seem to want to engage. And when Parker got close, he let his hands go, and he did all he could, and he he won the fight at a canter in the end. So, as bad as Wilder looked on the night, Parker did look good. But could he impose that same game plan on Ziggy Zhang? No. So he's going to have to have a different, a different approach. So what are they working on? I don't know. Like, can you stay out on the outside against Zhang? Um, he's such a big unit. Like. The ball's on Parker, I say, for taking this fight because he had a bit of credit in the bank. If Agreed. he had known, if he had known White was fucking going to be available against soon, he might have waited it out. Maybe so it was a world <laughs> title fight, though, as well. So, well, it's a title <clears throat> fight of sorts, you know. So it's big money again in Riyadh. They're fucking, you know, it's massive money. I'm sure involved for them, like fucking, and he doesn't need the money. He's fucking made it already in a lot of ways, apparently, <laughs> Big Joe. But um, yeah, like I think I think Zhang will stop him. I think Zhang will stop him kind of around eight, nine rounds. I just think it'd be too much to him for him when he starts to... There's a big, big difference in the size of the two of them too. I know they're both heavyweights, but I'm sure Zhang is coming in a lot heavier. And and I don't think it's the one point. With Wilder, he just had to avoid the right hand and he did a great job of closing the distance and, and making sure that he wasn't there for, for Wilder's right hand. Not that he fucking threw it that often, but I think Zhang is going to be way more active and it's a different proposition trying to keep him off you for twelve rounds. And I think he once he starts to I think once he starts to get through one Joe Packer, there's such a big size difference. I think he'll stop him around eight eight or nine rounds. I agree with that as well. Um Hamid says Parker might make him look silly and slow. I don't agree with that, Andy, at all, to be honest. I think Zhang, for all of his faults, he's not slow. He's got really quick hands. And Parker didn't really do too much of a good job of making Joyce look uh, silly and slow. 
Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like written Zang off in the past now, but he he's, has won me over. To be fair, and I agree with what Dominic was saying. It's probably the best thing for the sport because if if, if Zang wins, because Parker's had his time, you know, he's had his chance. Zhang, regardless of what his age and that he is, kind of new to the kind of top part of the scene and that. And I think he's, you know, he's he's got himself there by by merit. He's 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 won two two fights against Joe Joyce to prove it, and that's what he's deserving at that moment. Stepped up when when it really mattered. So I think he's next in line at some point. So he should get the winner uh, or a crack at Music or Fury or or Joshua. He's, he's certainly deserving it, I think. Anyway, so. Um, I'm not too sure about a, about a prediction. I, I, as I said, I hope Zhang wins. Um, certainly hasn't he be slept on. And if he does catch Parker, um, has Parker then really got it in him that he kind of like really start digging out? I mean, look, look at the mess of Joe Joyce's face after that first fight. Um, if if that starts happening to Parker, you know, he's, he, as I say, he's been over the course now. He's earned his money. How much is he willing to take? So that'll be interesting. Uh, but I, I, I don't see Parker as this a slip boxer, you know, making them look, uh, make him look silly. And that I mean, end of the day, he hasn't got a lot, you know a lot of power about him. Um, he yeah, does have Zang, 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 as I said, I've underrated Zhang a wee bit as well. He has got he has got skills about him. He's a southpaw as well, and he's got, he's got power in both hands. So he needs to be respected. He, he Parker, you'd say. He does have good hand speed, but I wouldn't say that Chile Zhang has slow hands. That's He's got thing. fast hands, I think, for a big old 40 exactly. year old. And I, I can't shake what Mark Stanton said there in the chat, you know, going back, thinking back to that fight against Parker. I mean, Wilder threw, he did, Mark Stanton, as you see at the comment, he didn't throw a thing. Uh, well, you were waiting for Wilder to get started in that fight, man. I remember just, you know, we mentioned that about six or seven frames. Like, well, come on, then. Get yeah. started. And Zhang will not be like that either. No, he, he, he'll, he'll be throwing the first five, six. To be fair, if, uh, I'm looking okay. forward to that. It's a good fight. Uh, me too. I, I, I take Matty's comment there in the chat about, about the renal failures to carry on. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, why, I kind of wrote, that's why I wrote him off after yeah. that because I'm like, saying, well, if that's what's happening, there's something wrong with him, obviously, if you're having renal failure. But he's pulled it back. He's come back strong. Whatever it is, and that, as I say, he's, he's got to take some bloody shift, man. What is he? He's about six five, six six. Zang, no, he's about six nine, and he's is massive. He? Yeah, I think I, he, uh, well, I could maybe not that big. But he's a frigging big unit, yeah. No, nah, he's got to take some bloody shift. And he, he, he shouldn't oh. have. Sure, he shouldn't have a, a very good chin. And six six. Good sorry, Andy, you're right. He's six aye, six. I just added a couple of inches to him. Aye, pretty good resilience about him. That so. Yeah, Matty oh, TKO says Arlene Burley. I'll be surprised. Tell you what, if Parker stops him, then foot me. Matty says there in the chat, Chang, he's not quick. He, he might not be quick of foot, but he's definitely, I agree with you, Steve. His hand speed is his hand speed is, is not to be sniffed up. For his size and the, the 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 way he loops them around, arcs the punches and the put yeah. power. And he's always in range as well. He's got to get in the range, whether it's fast feet or not. He's got to get in position. Like uh, I just can't say. I, I think just think when he starts to get close to Parker, you just bang him out eventually. Either. I think so too, Rob. I think if Parker knocks him out, it'd be some win, some performance. Like, oh, it'd be his best win by a mile. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else, Dominic? I know you want to speak about Ball against Vargas. I would think it's best if Ball wins because I'm sick of Vargas. But Vargas is tried and tested Amen. at this level out the two. I, well, I, I couldn't agree with you more about who's better, who is better for you know, it's better for Ball to win. But um, yes, uh, Vargas is tested and he's been on the road as well. Um, you know, he fought. Gavin McDonald, didn't he, in Hull about six or seven years ago? Um, yeah, that's but, enough to scare anybody. That would have toughened him up a bit. That would have, that would have been a bit like you know, all these people that say Lionel Messi, what's he going to be like when he plays Stoke on a cold <laughs> winter's night? Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, the thing about Vargas where I would worry about him is I don't know if he has the pop and his punch to, to, to turn Nick Ball and. You, know, you look at his record, a lot of his fights, the their their decisions. Um now I had a chat with Matty about this a couple of months ago and Matty was quite adamant that Ray Vargas was going to um have too much for Nick Ball, but I've been impressed with Ball for quite some time. I really like him. Um I've been watching a few interviews with him these past few days. Um I think he's a real breath of fresh air in the sport. He's in a sea of silliness and anonymity. He's just He's all business. Um, and I saw him fighting Belfast against that poor South African fella that um, had to go off the hospital. It mm. was on the Conlon, was not on the Mick Conlon, Luis Lopez undercard, Steve, wasn't it? Yeah. It was last was, May, yeah. wasn't 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I thought that was a good experience for him because it, it was, I think he knocked the guy out in the last round. And that South African guy, as we know now, faithfully, he was too tough for his own good. But it gave the ball the, the rounds. Um, and he's, I, I think he's going to stop Vargas late. Um, a statement, a statement there. Would love think, that, by the way. Would absolutely love that. I, I think he has. I, we well, haven't seen him. You're right, Steve. Well, it is. This is a step up. We well, haven't seen him. What well, we've seen him against Dog Bear, um, but I just think he's used to fighting guys that are bigger than him. And bear in mind as well, Ball said this in an interview. You have to figure figure into the equation. It's also difficult for the taller guy punching down. And fighting a guy, you know, getting the punching trajectory right to, to hit a guy that's that smaller than you. And um, Vargas is very tall and thin for the weight. That will benefit Ball because Ball has been there to be hit in the past. Like his head movement's not always on point. But as you said, the fact that Vargas is punching down, uh, well, if we can get Vargas punching at all, it'd be, it'd be, you know, <laughs> but I agree with you. I think that will be a problem. And, and Ball sort of going with the shoulders in and out. I think that will cause Vargas early on. Vargas is a stinking out of them. And it'd be just our luck if he flipping manages to fiddle him about over the distance. I think, I think Ball. I, I think Ball won't. The way he fights, he doesn't, I don't think he'll allow himself to be fiddled out of the fight. I think he'll, he'll take the bull by the horns. I think he'll, I think he'll look for the body. Um, I'm going to go for Ball either by... Take the ball by the horns. Take the ball by the horns. Um, I'm going for Ball for the win either by... As I say, I'm a fan of Ball, so I'm probably not being completely objective, but um, I take Ball to win either by decision or late stoppage I, think he, I really do rate him Okie doke Andy anything else from you from the undercard you fancy mentioning before we move on uh, you might say quick look at the undercard mate but uh, no I was just going to mention uh, just on, on the, the, the Ball Vargas fight I, again I agree with what uh, Dominic was saying I hope Ball wins I really like him as a fighter uh, maybe the size difference might actually go in his favour this time, actually, because obviously you know he's he can maybe kind of get the body better possibly, whereas Vargas might have to punch downwards. And Vargas has been dropped a number of times in his career, by the way, even early and even his time as champion, or you know, even even as early as uh, two or three fights. But I think Magsayo dropped him, I think as well, possibly. He so did. But he can punch Magsayo, to be fair. Aye, and as I, I say, I really like Ball's output. You know, he is, he's all action. You know, he, he keeps. He's got a very good engine. He's gonna he's gonna need it in this fight without doubt. So hopefully he's trained. Everything's been spot on from, and in terms of like acclimatizing to to Saudi Arabia and that type of thing. There's no no illnesses and that, and pray that he ends he ends his reign of Ray Vargas. Cause I am I am sick of that one. That that is one career I'll never watch back ever. Um, so hasn't, he, hasn't he been allowed to hold on to this belt and fight up at Super Feather? And that's right. Yeah, Gosh. he's had it for about 18 months now altogether. That's what happens when you're your WBC champion. You happen to be Mexican mm -hmm. as well, you know. But um, but as I say, it's hopefully Ball pulls it off. I'm pulling for him because as I say, it's, it's time to kind of get the older guys out of the sport now, get the fresh ones in. And Ball takes all the boxes in terms of, like, so again, you know, what you want. In terms of, like, so if. if if you know like your technical box and then balls your is, is your alternative and he's all action, he's come forward, punches galore, it's what you want. Uh so hopefully it does the business. If he, and as you say, Dominic, if he pulls a stoppage off, that is a hell of a statement. And it'll probably be the upset of the year so far if he was to stop him, I would say. Okie doke. Uh, Rob, we'll move on to you for this next segment just quickly before Bell You the Week. Uh, Canelo apparently is making an announcement on Tuesday. We were hoping he was going to fight the best of the best at the PBC. Everybody mm. wanted Benavidez as the third fight of the contract. And we thought that was the reason why he originally signed with the PBC was to cement that fight. However, Rob, it now appears that Canelo signed with the PBC on the basis that he wouldn't be fighting Benavidez. <laughs> And now they've fallen out. His contract is annulled, and it's a bizarre series of events all round. Well, <laughs> you don't like to say fighters are ducking anybody, but it looks like Canelo doesn't want to fight Benavides, doesn't it? Like <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear at this stage. It's it reminds me of the time when um, when Amir Khan signed with Eddie and Kell Brook got in the ring and said didn't really want to Amir Khan didn't really want to entertain talking him in the fight I said something like I signed with your promoter I'm chasing you and dropped the microphone and ran out of the ring like it seems a bit a bit of that doesn't it like I'm coming over to the BBC you're getting Benavides by these next few fights because at the end you're going to get Benavides 
Nah, Benavidez looks like at this. I I get it, totally get it. Like Canelo, fucking, it's Benavidez could fucking. It's it's a tough it's the toughest fight out there for Canelo at sixty eight. He doesn't want the Bivol fight rematch is not going to happen. I think that's good for him because I think Bivol would have beat him at sixty eight as well. Mm-hmm. He's coming towards the end. You know, it's fucking. You got to think like it's twelve years ago since Canelo kind of popped up on HBO, getting rocked by Cotto's older brother, and then went on that massive trajectory where he fought everybody. Basically, he got a couple of gift decisions, of course, along the way. He had his controversy around the the Mexican meet. But over the last five years, he's been firmly the biggest name in the sport. He generates the most pay-per-view revenue because of the Mexican fan base and the crossover appeal in America. He's fought everybody. But for for as as good as his resume was in the first half of of his career, on the wind down, there's been a lot of kind of rocky feelings and Callums and fucking John Riders and, you know, or any kind of fucking generic English name you can think of. He's fought like, um, so he just wants to fucking cruise control. He's going to make big money no matter who he fights. If he fights Mungi, it is still a big Mexican holiday fight. It's big numbers. If he fights Berlanga, it's the same thing. Mexico versus Puerto Rico. You get a, you get a story, you get a, a sellable fight. It's the it's not the fight that the hardcores want, but we don't get to fucking say what Canelo gets to do at this stage of his career. He's on the fucking he's on the the Floyd run uh, six fight deal with Showtime that he had it towards his end. Um, but you gotta say that's disappointing compared to what you could have had. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned there, Rob, Mungir in May, Belanga in September. They're decent enough fights, but they're the choices off the back of a duck, aren't they? Let's be honest. Yeah, like we we want to see Benavidez Canelo because we want to see the passing of the torch too. And sometimes that's the that's the thing that's happened with the with the networks getting so fragmented and the promoters, all this cross promotional shit that we've had to live through for the last ten to fifteen years, is that we're not getting these necessarily the the passing of the torch moments where the best guy who used to be the best guy has to fight the young lion to pass the fucking torch on, like, and that in turn helps build stars like so if Benavides had gone out and stopped Canelo per se he's probably the fucking biggest thing in boxing like isn't he on the on the come up like or one of them like he's getting his, his shine and then it depends how you you navigate him but so many times we see this like with you beat the guy who beat the you beat the man say and then you've nowhere to go after that like it's just I don't know you can't get to get your chance to fucking you're the guy on the come up but you can't get your chance to fucking knock the guy off the throne because you're on different networks and stuff. So it's just a strange one. But yeah, no, like we want a Benavides versus Canelo. We're getting Benavides versus Monguia or fucking Canelo versus Monguia. Not the worst fight in the world, but <laughs> does, yeah. does anybody think yeah. Monguia could do anything with Canelo? Like he's just going to be a static target for him, isn't he? Monguia is just going to walk straight to Canelo. Like, Yeah, I, I don't think he's the, I don't think Canelo's declined enough and I don't think, Mon, I don't think Monguia is going to get I think Mungi is approaching as good as he will be, um, and I don't think, but I don't think Canelo has declined enough to 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 be in danger of losing that fight. Um, uh, I mean, I saw a news the other day. David Benavides came out and said he he was happy to take as little as fight. Well, I say as little, but in terms of purses for the that are for these sorts of fights, he was willing to take five million, um, for the Canelo fight. Which eight percent tr- of the purse or something? Yeah, eight, ninety-two. He was yeah, he was willing to give Canelo ninety-two percent of the fucking of the share to make the fight. Safe to say, he wanted that fight. I think Benavides. I, I think as well, some of Dominic, some of Canelo's verbiage is strange. He's like he was coming out in social media or whatever it was, saying, "Oh, no one will give me credit no matter who I fight." So you know, I, I don't want to fight Benavides based on the fact that even if I beat him, people are saying oh, I'm ducking somebody else, which I thought was a bit of a disingenuous comment. But look at that one on there. He put out a thing saying, "Oh, keep an eye on Instagram or whatever it was," on his and then he's no golf, no life. Hashtag appeared here. Save the date. 17th of May 2024. He's taking part in this tournament. So that's not going to be two weeks after Benavides, is it? We knew then. <laughs> Why didn't he just go fight Crawford then? <laughs> well, Should've everyone he's linked for... to, is, everyone he's linked to is being bought up in weight, aren't they? Charlo, Crawford, they're talking about the corpse of Spence. Nobody in the you, you want payday, you come up and wait to get payday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Crawford seemed like he really wanted to fight. Let's, let's, fucking, let's have that one. Like That's better than fucking... But then again, he probably wouldn't sell the same as a monkey you fight so he, he said the same about Crawford as he did about Benavides didn't he and he, he said you know I, I'm not going to get the 
So he's um, playing golf instead. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> I thought it was Rory McIlroy. <laughs> no, I just, I just say that he's playing fucking golf instead, man. You, you don't do what the champion tells you to do. You will sit down and do as you're told. When he decides to fight, then he'll fight, and then you'll come and get your payday. Now you just use boys. Keep he hasn't given a payday to the fella on the fucking flyer anyway. He looks like he's done that on his phone, hasn't he? Fuck's sake. <laughs> I just love it though, man. It's like you know, he should retire anyway. I mean. He's past his peak now, I would think. He's not going to go up any higher in weight in terms of success, I don't think. Just And the other guys are just basically hanging off, waiting for that phone call. So he can do what he wants, really, can he? Yeah. Uh, Andy, you know what's coming, don't you? He's what? DAZN. He's back on DAZN. DAZN oh, also have Jake Paul. Wasted oh, no, no time last night in calling him out. Canelo now with his new duck and weave strategy. Are we totally oh, confident? Yeah. No, 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 Canelo, no, no, Jake I, Paul. I switch, no. Dave. Pay per view twenty twenty five. I tell you what, I want to Logged. see, mate. I want to see. I, I want to see the, the situation. Remember when he, he got all hot and bothered with Lionel Messi at the World Cup last year? Yeah. I want to see the two fight because Messi's come to the end of his career and that, so he should take Look up. What uh, Messi do, dear? Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Poor Messi. He likes to drink, doesn't he, Canelo? Didn't he, he does. Eh? From, but banned from his. Well, let's not hold that against I don't him. fucking care, care, man. I don't fucking care. I, I think the golf's a more interesting one because you know you're you're alluding to it sort of jocularly there, Steve, that he wasn't going to fight Benavidez two weeks before this golf event. I think that's you know on a serious point. The in the last few years, you know, it's it's sort of been known that he's really into his golf and he's you know it's a uh, it's become a big sort of passion for him. But I mean, I I was saying it to one of the guys the other day. Poor I think, bastard. I think um fucking life. Go Ryan Garcia away. What the fuck is wrong out on the golf course? Fucking stop that, will you? I've got to follow the Oscar template post retirement. I mean, um, so I I think that ever since the B ball fight, I think what really annoyed them wasn't even more so than actually losing the B ball was the fact that they picked them to begin with. The fact that they got it wrong. I don't think they would have fought B ball at all if they had even the slightest inkling that B ball was capable of doing what he did that night. Oh no way. And I think that really rankles with them. And I think that might contribute to why they're so reluctant to fight a Benavidez now. Um, yeah, so it's. I, I think if, if, if he doesn't fight Benavidez next, I don't think we'll ever see it, to be honest. And then, interestingly, on Benavidez, they're, they're talking about Benavidez fighting Gavosdik, which is an interesting fight. Um, I don't think Gavosdik should be fighting again, but. Teddy Atlas came out and said this week he thought Gavostik would beat Benavides despite how big a fan he is of Benavides. Mm-hmm. But um, I wasn't he training Gavostik at one point? He was training in Canelo's camp before Canelo fought Bivol. He they brought him in for sparring. Canelo sparred him before the Bivol. But fight. didn't that wasn't Teddy Atlas training Gavostik? Oh, I, that's right. He trained him for the Peterbi. He trained him uh, for the Adonis Stevenson fight, and then right, for the right. and then for the uh, and then he. Obviously, he didn't work with him after. But, I mean, he wasn't fighting for three years after the better, better be a fight. But mm-hmm. Andy, final word to you before we move on. We we'll fight, mate. Well, just about the Canelo situation. Are you unmuted? Oh. If, it's up to you. Oh, sorry, mate. I didn't know I was there. So no, I, I, I kind of had my say. Really, it's he's coming to the end now. Really, um, if he's if he's going to pass the torch, I, I don't want this excuse about don't want to fight a Mexican at the end of the day. And no, I mean, what, what the hell was Chavez at the end of the day? You know, yeah, that's a little and bit. and Benavides isn't. I don't know if people really class him, but he's not even the Mexican. But is he again? What's his ethnic background? Is it no Dominican? Right, well, or... he's Mexican. He calls himself the Red Flag, doesn't he? La Bandera Roja. Um, he has a bit of Ecuadorian in him as or well. I think wasn't he born in Ecuador, Arizona? Right, right yeah. okay. So I look. Obviously, he's 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 a he's a threat. He's some sort of danger and that. But if that is that, if that's the reason why Canelo only fight him is because of whatever Mexican or you know Hispanic heritage, whatever and that, then that's not going to wash me at the end of the day and that. But I would love to see Benavidez fight guys like Baterbev and Bivol. You know, I've said it before. He's a he's a weight bully. I want to see him up at seventy five. Um, he would probably beat everybody at sixty eight, maybe apart from Canelo uh, at this point. We'd wait and see, but. I want to see him at 75. That's his natural weight, and I like to see him face, as I say, the 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 two guys. If he beats these two guys, that that would be that would be a, that would be a statement. No beating a guy like Canelo, who's really a pumped up middleweight, isn't he? Yeah. Go ahead, Dominic. I I, I can't see Benavidez. I would love to see Benavidez against either of those two, but I can I can see him fighting Bivol sooner than he would fight um, and he would fight Baturbiev. I I don't think he would fight Baturbiev. Um. No chance. 
the entry. I mean, it would be some fight if it happened, but I think he would get stopped. Yeah, he would. He's a threat. He's a danger. He's a weight bully, says Andy. Talking about Canelo, of course. Not Ronnie Hussein, whose T-shirt came this week. There he is. Hussein. 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 Who's saying not you anyway? Buying that fucking t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Looking well, old Ronald there. <laughs> Come on, Ron. We wish yeah. it well. <laughs> Shout out to Ron, the boy in the t-shirt. Right, let's get on to Belly of the Week then, shall we? Rob's here, Andy's here, Dominic's here as well. What shall we have? To... Scared the bitches away with them t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking to crazy Rob, we were talking earlier about uh, Ryan Garcia and playing us in this week for Value of the Week episode Oof. 562. It's only the man himself, Oscar, and his side piece filming him on Instagram here. I'm not quite sure what's going on. You're <laughs> shooting back to Vegas. <laughs> Big Titty Committee. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her she, pretending to think that's did funny. You know, did, you know she, did you know she's fly was open there by the way? Did you notice no. that? Did you know notice? <laughs> Play it again. Play it again. Yeah. Look at that. You see it? Pair shooting back to Vegas. Pair shooting back to Vegas. <laughs> 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 this is a fake laugh. She's like, had his toy out there by the way. <laughs> Millionaire Oscar sure is funny when he has a brow over his head. <laughs> this fucking nut on coke. Oh, he's some fucking man. <laughs> oh dear me, good old Oscar. He's how loving life. Bar- how many Him bar- and people, fucking B Hop, by the way, they're like Lauren and Hardy, aren't they? Like a fucking tr- a throwback to times gone by. Like fucking Bernard out at the fucking press conference with his fucking clear. Um, CTE. repercussions of fucking fighting Kovalev and Joe Smith back to back in between 18 months. Like, he didn't need that. Like, he was perfectly coherent. Well, I say perfectly, but he was coherent to getting those fucking face offs against Pascal. There was nothing wrong with him. Hung on too long, and now he's coming out with all kinds of craziness. And Oscar at the back, like, they are just and they keep talking all this fucking hyperbole about they're going to take over the sport and change. Like, you two are all news. Like, you're hanging in there by the thread of Ryan Garcia, and he's on the fucking way out. So, uh, sad to see two great fighters. <laughs> <laughs> they just won't piss off, will they? They just, Golden Boy won't die. Like, they're hanging on by a fucking trade. They're propping up another event. Oscar with his... Uh, Garcia comes to the fucking press conference with a white suit, and Oscar has to come with a whiter one. <laughs> 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 two of them looking like a fucking Scarface tribute act in the fucking press Fighting conference. Fighting for the white so. behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, my God. Funny what lines when... don't do it. When B Hop goes on these big meandering tirades, like he makes me seem flipping uh, <laughs> concise, but he goes on these big, long, obscure. And you see, Ryan Garcia got up at the press conference and said, Bernard, do you want to squash the beef? Oh, oh no, I miss that bit. Oh, he did. He got up. He, 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 Bernard was in the middle of one of his big speeches, and uh, Garcia just got up and, and said, uh, Bernard, do you want to squash the beef? And Hopkins was all, no, there's no beef between us. Um, and then there was this great picture of Hopkins. He put his arm around Garcia, and Garcia looked really dejected or something. Um, no, it was it was an interesting moment, all right. He, he the beef stems from the fact that um, Garcia thinks his promoters are against him. <laughs> he's got a lot of paranoia. He's very paranoid. This guy. He tweeted out R.I.P. Ryan six six six. He uh, yeah he. he he fucking said that uh, that Bernard said that uh, boxing will call your bluff. So he's he deducted from that that his promoters are against him and they're a bunch of haters. And that's where the beef between him and Bernard came from. And then he said, like, he went on to say loads of times that Bernard is a weirdo. He's a weirdo. He's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> High praise coming from him, eh? Well. See what he said that shit in the bathroom. <laughs> Yo, Andy, you've alerted me to this one. <laughs> Aye, so, so, so someone's someone's put a I uploaded or left this comment on a Mickey Ward Shane Eddy video that I was watching. I fucking looked down below. The fighter was the movie when Ward defeated Neri. I was like, well, if Mitchell's really on the ball with the breaking news. Eh? Like, the film came out like fucking ten years ago, didn't it? 
<laughs> Mitchell Hodak, Hodak, hold that thought. <laughs> Someone was on the comments just scrolling through, like, finally, how the fucking answer I was looking for. <laughs> Mr. Okay, so Mr. Mitchell isn't the real Mr. Current Affairs, or really, eh? So, uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like when Maddie does the fucking same joke that you do ten times worse two minutes later. You know that way. <laughs> oh, we miss him, Rob. We miss him. Yeah. We don't miss him. He's in the fucking chat. He can't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's, in the uh, he's, in, he's doing Puerto Rico by the way. He's always on here listening. He's in Puerto Rico and he's bashing the keyboard. Get a fucking life for yourself. What's the matter with you? He's probably putting bets on, isn't he? <laughs> He's probably mm. doing, doing the casino by losing money hand over fist. Probably this is why there's the no machine. justice. See, this way I said this last week. I used to be in Puerto Rico. I would not be in the fucking chat if I was in Puerto Rico, says the but, fella who fucking called I, in on his wedding day. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, though. I, tell you what, I hope he doesn't lose all his cash and pull a Felix for Dejo and the missus, by the way. <laughs> Maddie <laughs> Verdejo. Well, he might get away with it, um, Andy. Yeah, exactly, with this man, right? Last night really when the somebody. lights kept going out every five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was, there was, I can't mind what card it was on me. It was even worse. Was like, I think it was like one of the YouTube shows. I think it might have been in Italy. It was like a rave party, mate. It was going orange, then yellow, then bloody blue, and then red, and then green. It was just, it was, I had to switch it off because it was just like fucking with my eyes and that much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> See how boxing fucks with your head and little shit that happened in the boxing world will stay in your mind like or whatever forever. Maybe it's just me, but see when the lights go off and something. I keep thinking about Brother Nazim talking about Bernard Hopkins that time when there was a female interviewer in the gym and the electricity went. He said before he looked, Bernard Hopkins was outside with his gym bag and he was like, Why'd you leave the gym? And he goes, Because the fucking lights just cut off with 20 fellas and one woman, so someone touched her, it wasn't the champ. <laughs> <laughs> so now anytime the fucking lights go anywhere I am, I'm like, do I have to fucking leave this place? Hold on, who's in here? <laughs> <laughs> Matty Ma- Ma- says he's got explosive diarrhea. I, I think uh, he's trying to, to poison him, I think. He's just trying to count it on my hand. That's the fucking same as every week then, isn't it? For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Too much rum. Too much rum, I uh, rum and coke. <laughs> there we go. Right, what else have we got here? Let's have a look down. Uh, yeah, so I had to I had to nominate these boys. The Stick and Move podcast. I'm not sure who they are, but this came up earlier, recommended on my feed. Andy, is David Tua a Hall of Famer? <laughs> volume two. <Fuck>. What? <laughs> what? Is it see Volume one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's no definitely not. What the hell, man? Oh, come on, I mean, David, he was a good fighter, like, but Jesus, I ah, was a good fighter. And by the way, can I just say something? I went back and watched it, and I don't know if I'm just getting old in my age now, or if I'm just getting hard to please or whatever. Not in my old age, but that, I find that that Ike Abuchi fight a wee bit slightly overrated. I don't know if I'm just overthinking that a wee bit, but who knows? Maybe that's what it is. I haven't watched it in a while. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't say he's a Hall of Famer, but I'd say if he was around today, he'd be a world champion about three times over when you see who has been world champions. Anyway. I thought Andy was going to say he went back and watched the David Tua Lennox Lewis fight, and I was going to say fair play. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one at the time, man. Flip me. That was, it was a hard watch, anyway. Let's, let's put it that way. But yeah, Tua. I was, at, I was listening. I was listening, talking about heavyweights, and I was listening to like Patrick Connor and uh, his podcast. We see them again. Knuckles and Gloves, I think it's called that. And they okay. are actually talking about Mike Weaver. Yes. Maybe something for us, maybe, maybe to talk about that, you know, mm. how the nearly man, but guys with big punches and that almost to the promised land, 15 round mark, and then it kind of like falls away from that type of thing and that. I'm Mike Sorry. Weaver. Yeah, I Mike remember Weaver. Him. Didn't he end up with about, he had about 15 losses on his record, didn't he, Weaver? He, he won a uh, WA, w, he won yeah. a title. Who did he not get? fragmented that time. Sh- he had a WBA title. South Africa won it, did they know? Oh, he knocked out. Who did he knock out? Was it one of the, Jerry Cutsey. Cutsey, yeah. Jerry Cutsey. Dokes, I was thinking. Wasn't it Dokes? He fo- no. Was it the, no, Dokes. Dokes knocked him out, did he? Ah, uh, the 15th round or something. Yes, he, he beat Tillis. He beat James Tillis. Sorry, that's what I was thinking. Right. About, yeah. yeah. All right, enough, Cutsey. Yeah, he beat him as well. I'm just looking back down the record. All right, enough. Weaver early on in his career. Yes, it was Dokes beat him. That was one I was, I was trying to remember. All right, good fighter, Mike Weaver. 18 losses he ended up with in the end, on not Aye. 12 by knockout. Hercules. I knew I'd get Matty to bite on that tour comment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Matty. Um, shout out to Tyson Fury. I was in Home Bargains a couple of days ago, and this was on the shelf. Did you Tyson... buy it? 
<laughs> I did not. 15, 15 notes, Andy. Oh, Eau de toilet goodness. spray. Yeah, oh, I, I see it now. I oh, the yeah. toilet. Tyson Fury on the toilet. He's a fucking neck. He's <laughs> selling anything. I've seen, fu- seen that Furiosity drink he's got out, mate, for like 99 cents or whatever it was in the fucking local bin bargain. That was the no, home bargain, sorry. Yeah, bin bargain. <laughs> bargain bin the bargain like book fire. Set fire imagine up. the fucking imagine some young one like she fucking goes home with a chap like she fucking wakes up the next day asks her to use the bathroom she goes to fucking and she sees he has that that's what she's ever going for the night before <laughs> the Tyson Fury on the toilet oh, oh you're smelling you're smelling you're smelling good there honey what's, what's it going on there Furiosity the, this is the Furiosity you're smelling off me here uh huh What's your after say? It's Tyson Fury's on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you don't spray any of this on you. The Dillian White aftershave coming out soon. Dillian White cleared to continue career following investigation <laughs> by himself. An investigation. Wilder's comeback fight's going to be against Dell in Texas. Uh, go, go to know who this expert is, by the way. This, this, this expert is definitely... He's paid for. Uh, he's he's no independent. The same experts that said Iraq had WMD or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, this, this, this is the problem you've got here. You, when you actually have powerful people who actually come to a conclusion before they actually get the facts, so yeah. you then get your, your, your minions to go and find those facts just to fit your narrative. That's, that's what really fucks you up there. Fuck Tony Blair. Mm-hmm. You hear that, Marty? Don't no, don't encourage And George W. Call it. Be calling this, is one of the, this is one of the best times ever because all you can do is just fucking type about it in the chat and we're not going to read it. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> a big soliloquy. <laughs> Oi, bone next week, by the way, bone fire next week. We'll get after all the politics comments. Oh, he will. He'll be enjoying it. Yeah, talking of politics, Dominic, I actually forgot to play this one last week, but you reminded me of it um, before the Podrick McCrory Edgar Belanga fight came up. Oh, yes. We had a bit of a Mick, uh, Mick Conlon ring walk esque comment <laughs> from Chris Mannix. Let's have a listen. The mantra this week for the camp of Podrick McCrory has been the Irish phrase, Chucky R. Loud, which means our day has come. <laughs> and he got it wrong, actually. It actually means our day will come. Our day will come. That's what Mrs. <laughs> Wellington was saying. But I thought it was funny all the same. It's just that wonderful American blissful unawareness of yeah. oh, ignorant bastards, man. That's what they are, man. Paul G. McCrory he was a member of the provisional IRA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Filing his through. taxes with the IRA. I'm, I'm waiting for fucking riddled dementia Joe Biden to come out and say, Fucking prick. A great <laughs> bunch of guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Provisional right. IRA, great bunch of lads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Dominic, for that one. There's, there's King Roy again, Rob. This might be curtains. <laughs> <laughs> he's at it now, and he like. <laughs> yeah, I'm sad. He says, "I don't know. I worry about him, Bob. To be honest, I know it's Bell you the week territory, like, but Paul King. Well, like uh, now, I'm starting to fucking. I'm gone, Richard. I need Richard E. Hall at times like this. If the fucking, if only he was available. Well, I, to you know what I, mean? I need to fucking. I need somebody to fucking pull up the timestamps and fucking do the do the behind the scenes here. Because is he at it or is he not at it? Like, is he really fucking? Is he really steaming at the press conference or is he fucking? Pulling a fucking Kaiser Souza, who knows? Like, I think he's fucking steaming, and I think no matter what his habits that he have uh, will show up in the ring. But I'm entertained by all this. I have to fucking tell you, his fight. I didn't give a fuck about it until about two days ago, and now I'm all in. Like, King Roy sending cryptic messages about Gildando. We'll know something's up then. He's under the fucking human mutilations next. For fuck's sake. Oh, what? Is Riddle saw mystery. He's not a fan of Fred West, is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it> handwriting <laughs> Hand analysis oh my god fucking yeah. Jesus Christ yeah, there's, a, there's a Fred Rice rabbit hole that we will not go down at this time but <laughs> that's the after the pod if you want to fucking hear more about it I don't want to end up down a Fred Rice rabbit hole thank you very much Rob. <laughs> <laughs> King Ray is able to say King Ray will be able to say you know if, if about Floyd he's, he's saying like at least I can write Floyd he'll be able to say something like that <laughs> Can you read? Exactly. And write an analysis of King Roy. Uh, Matty, sorry you're getting nominated. <laughs> the moment it was revealed to Matty, sitting in the arena waiting for Amanda Serrano to come out, he looks in the Nutters group to find out that what? the 
<laughs> off down to something falling in Serrano's eye. I wonder if uh, it goes refund though. Do you get a refund, mate? I want to know. That is fucking amazing. <laughs> I shouldn't be that happy about it, but I am. I can't help. I'm overjoyed <laughs> with this news. Just to ask the listeners, by the way, of course, if Matty didn't get his refund, can you give us a couple of super chats just to, co- just to kind of cover Matty's course here? Because, you know... Yeah, come on, we've got to fly this guy back from Puerto Rico before he starts enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say after shit or first. <laughs> oh, he's got explosive diarrhoea. Um, talking of diarrhoea, here's a man on the run, Jared Anderson, arrested oh, in Michigan after high-speed chase. He was sending out Instagram messages as well to Bob Arum and Top Rank. And they, te- Aaron was, always gets you in the long grass. Uh, he, he was trying to get away from Earl Spence, wasn't he? No, I thought, well, there wasn't a sight in a white Bronco there, was there anywhere? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't Fucking think hell, so. Man. I bet, was there was something about him doing in Florida recently as well. Was yeah, he, he had a concealed weapon, didn't he, or something? Oh, that would have been something, and then he got done for, was it weed or something? No. As well. on a bad path. So, I don't know what's happened here, but the, 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 it seems to have kind of turned the ship pretty quick. And that's including the, what's been happening in the ring there recently as well, because you know he's been talking about retirement. He's probably three, that's three, four years away. By the time of his age and that, but this is crying, cr- breaking you know. down, crying, and all talking about right. this fella's finished, man. Forget about him. Put him in the set Mitchell pile because that's where this he's going to fucking end up. Again, he's right, going nowhere. Was, this is what I said earlier, Steve, about the heavyweight division. I mean, it's shit, man. You, just, you take out, take out Fury, Usyk, and probably Joshua at this point, right? What mm. else is there? There's fucking, well, obviously, you've got Zang and that, but I mean, Parker's had his day. You've got this guy fucking up. You've got Miller getting packed in. You've got Wilder kind of throw right hands anymore. And you've got fucking well, Lucas, I'm, Brown's, I'm, Lucas Brown's making scrambled egg and bacon and mushrooms and that. You've got to say, the, the era of the American heavyweight is pretty much over, isn't it? Wilder, Wilder fucking Aye. reignited that flame for a little yeah. while. They hadn't had a heavyweight before Wilder in fucking 25 years. And now... Who's going to be the next one? It's not going to be big baby Jared Anderson. I know that. Okay, no. hell. And even the likes of Torres is being moved at a snail's pace. Like that yeah, what happens after that? Like he fights once a year as well. Like for a guy who's a fucking prospect. What's the, he's yeah, not way, no. Again, not, Torres, nowhere man, active enough. Torres getting wasted because he's not going active. You're saying active enough. But Anderson, probably another one, waiting for that Saudi payday and then he'd retire. But everybody else is waiting for that. Waiting for the call. Mm. I hope Trevor Bryan gets the Saudi payday instead of him. Trevor Bryan, for me, do we even know if he's walking after his last fight? I forgot all about him, actually. Who, who did he fight? I want, to see Tony, I want to see Tony Thompson come back, by the way. Really <laughs> his wife is not she walking. Would, <laughs> can you imagine the amount of wheelchairs he'd be managed to buy, man, if he fucking got that Saudi money? For fuck's sake. That'd be amazing, man. Oh, dear. She'd even buy her a new hip whenever she needed it. <laughs> Put her on traction as well when she needed to stretch to it. Oh. This was a bad one. Obviously, everybody saw the footage. I don't know what the hell was going on in Ross Common, but I know it wasn't nice. Uh, Carl Frampton was tweeting oh, no. out. Oh, for no, sake. Disgusting scenes horrific. at the All Island under 14s last night. Keep that madness away from the kids. But then Alonso jumps in and says, Gad again. Yeah. <laughs> halfway through. Uh, so that, was, that was a pretty Anybody's not seen the footage. Oh, that I was... think we've got a couple of American listeners that as well. There's, yeah. there's a, there was a junior, junior amateur show. And yeah. some assholes have come into the gym with fucking machetes and started just basically ramming, having a ramming in the place. We're like, mm-hmm. what age with the kids? 11 year old, if that, maybe uh, younger than that, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, basically, man. And they haven't mm-hmm. watched this shit. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing to do with the guard. Uh, what we else? Know we've got? Off, no, that we know of. That we know of. Um, we've got a few people nominating this, apparently. Uh, Charlie Parsons, I'm delighted to launch my own sports network powered by Whale Hydrate, the stomping ground. Predominantly launching in boxing, the channel looks to feature talent from the world of football and other sports. Content will also be available on the DAZN app at DAZN Boxing. There you go. Imagine, um, imagine, imagine, imagine leaving your job, go to work for Whale Hydrate, start on, start on a new platform, go straight on DAZN. One of the very first interviews that you get is the world heavyweight champion. I wonder who's got a hand in that, by the way. Mm. He's a great I'm young lad, anyway. That person's he's a great I mean... lad. He's a lovely chap. Doing this. Say nothing bad about him, anyway. He's fucking doing good. <laughs> Sounds like he's doing well. Hope we wish him well. Aye. Doesn't need a hand up or a leg air, by the way, for by the sounds of it. Just go access overnight like that. <laughs> Uh, Dude, I love to see these new channels just... to think that that's another thing that I'm not going to look at, so that's good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of access, we know that Pro Box has hooked up now with the um, boxing scene. And if you wondered what you were going to be receiving, Rob, here's a piece from Eric Raskin. We all want Canelo Benavidez, but Canelo owes us nothing. So puff PR pieces, basically, is the type of sponsor. I'll tell you what, though. Ad after that. 
I've I've seen a change in the articles, you know, and how they're shite. written. PR shite. I, it's, through there, it's, telling you. There's definite corporate fucking word. The, the, the way it was written, just, it's completely different. Jake Donovan's going to be a big, big miss for that place. It's, yeah. it's interesting because they've got Kieran Mulvaney now writing for them, who who is very good. Um, but I have I must actually keep an eye out if you're saying that there's been a note you've noticed the change in their in the tone of their of their writing this past few weeks. Um, I'll keep an eye out for that. But um, I was sort of happy to see Mulvaney. He wrote the fight report for what fight was it, Steve? Last week the Alanga, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, I was a very good write up of the fight itself. But um, so who, who's bought them now? Is it the pro the people behind Pro Box? They right. run the Pro Box channel, which is a promoter. It's all very weird, isn't it? Pro Box is a promoter, are they? Right, so well, you've, got, there's, you've got Eric Raskin and Kieran Mulvaney who write for them. So there's two ex HBO guys, both writers. I think, I think Mulvaney's an author as well, possibly. Yeah. Um, there was somebody else. Uh, who the hell was it? Pugmire, has is, is he gone there or did, was he always uh, there? I didn't see his name there. He's there at times, isn't he? Uh, he? He wrote a thing the other day on there. I think there's, 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 but basically it's guys who were like in the ring magazine or running with the hbo periphery and that back in the day they've all seemed to be kind of moving across the boxing scene so there's definitely... it's sponsorship paid ads pr crap i'm available if they want to give me a shout the, the pro box so that they're are they in the business of actually putting on I, they, they do that's what the yeah, wants, isn't it? it's it's matty's favorite pro box who run it in the it's, rehabilitation center it's the prospects coming up isn't it <clears throat> yeah well, it's prospects or sort of ex-champions and all. They, they do put on good fights, to be fair. That's the entity that's bought boxing scene, as far as I know, off CBS, I think. Maddie's going to be in the rehabilitation centre someday for the gambling, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you can just wander out into ringside and watch a fight afterwards while you're all doped up. <laughs> Betty Ford Clinic. Fucking <laughs> 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 he's referring to well, he's fucking <laughs> Oh, oh, Ronnie. I, did, I didn't manage to click on Ronnie, but we might as well nominate him for Belly of the Week as well. Go on, Ron. We'll get you in there. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Calix says, how is Rick Glazer better at breaking stories than dudes who are paid to break huge stories? <laughs> a conversation needs to be had about how incredibly terrible the boxing media is currently. And Marcos Vallejas says, it's because he knows executives at other boxing companies that tell him shit. Those execs won't tell media anything. And Rick Glazer says, Marcos, thank you for recognising you're spot on. In a typical business day, I talk to 30 to 40 boxing executives and boxing attorneys around the globe. Most reporters don't have that type of access or worldwide reach. Bollocks. Best regards, Marcus. Uh, bollocks is he doing <laughs> fucking 30 to 40 calls a day with a fucking boxing day. Will you fuck off? 30 to 40 a day. And what time of the day does he start at? What time of the day does he finish? <laughs> And are these boxing as execs all of them? Who's the 30 to 40 boxing day? executives in the world? <laughs> Every day, <laughs> let alone. Sport, man. Let alone I would love, fucking... I would love, I would love for someone to do a Jeremy Beadle with him, by the way. Ray, 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 this is your Let's life, by the way. Hand it's a list of bollocks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He'd be in hell if this is true that uh, Canelo Bungay is going to end up on uh, PBC on Prime. He'd be in hell. <sighs> I talk to 30 to 40 boxing executives and boxing attorneys around the globe every day. That's how many is that a week? So, what you got? You got 200 a week. He's talking to 200 boxing executives a week. week. On a standard fucking Monday to Friday. (laughs) Fuck off, Rick Glazer. But you you never hear these executives talking about Rick Glazer, though. eh? Oh, Rick Glazer's a great man of boxing knowledge. He's a great boxing mind. He makes the big fights. His his job is so big. He's so important that we can't do it without him. I kind of wish them. I had one of these wishy-washy fucking money laundering boxing jobs. <laughs> I really wish. If there's anyone out there listening, that's a great bunch of lads that was the fucking laundering oh, for me. Just give me a shout. Pro, pro I just read this back, Steve. I just, I just, I just, I've just noticed something here. I Most talked to 200 us. fake boxing execs no, a week for that break. He didn't put this, he didn't put it through, I spell check. Most reporters don't have the type of excess of what <laughs> Or what will reach? <laughs> well, Dan Raphael has a lot of excess. <laughs> <laughs> and worldwide reach. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that grey fleece. <laughs> oh. fleece. Beige fleece, Andy. Beige well, fleece, maybe it was grey when it started. <laughs> ah, it was beige now. All these sweaty moments. He probably sleeps with that hang on. He eh? just oozed through. <laughs> In a bus <laughs> It's like fucking Charlie Brown's blanket. Like he's never without the fucking thing. Like 
Stink lines fucking <laughs> <laughs> showing up on it when he's on fucking Ellie's sake back. <laughs> oh, Remember yeah. the time he broke the chair? In the <laughs> he sits on two chairs. Whenever I was ringside at the Boston fight, he, he has to sit on two chairs. What he did then, I don't know if he does now. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> right. Final He's one step away from the fucking, you know what I mean? <laughs> one step. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, this one's from uh, Saint and Graves. Eh? Me and Andy got tagged in this week. Uh, this is Saint and Graves. Right. Now, Jim, one of the most oh. bizarre sporting moments of the week wonderful. had to do with uh, a boxing match. Oh, you, you have some wonderful. details it, for us. It was wonderful. This... This was Steve McCarthy versus Tony Wilson, and as you can see, Wilson's getting the worst of it, and it, the fight's about to be stopped when in comes Mar Wilson! Good old Mar Wilson with her stiletto heel, and she as, was clunched old McCarthy, and that was the end of it. And he went off, look, there's, you can see it going in. This woman could be the woman to take on Mike Tyson. Because the only, the only fight he ever lost was against his mother-in-law. And he goes out of the ring. <laughs> I remember this man. She, she grieves him, man. Grieves him was a low-key savage, man. He was... He was, he was giving it to him, wasn't he? Oh, what, that I fucking... Love... Only fight he ever lost was to his mother-in-law, Robin Gibbons' is mad. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, hello. Looks sick. <laughs> Gre- Greaves, Greaves was low-key savage, but I can remember when um, Dundee United played Manchester United in Europe one one year, mid eighties possibly. And before the game, Greavesy was fucking was was getting it big talk. Man United was going to fucking smash them up and that. Anyway, big Hamish McAlpine. Where's a fucking Scottish name for you, Hamish McAlpine? Goalkeeper had done the 80. They saved a penalty that day. I think, I think they might have drew possibly. Or might have got beat 2 1. I can't mind, but it was a low scoring game and they didn't get embarrassed anyway. And the big Hamish McAlpine, he's getting interviewed after the game and he goes like that. Aye. You could ask big, yeah, you ask me, Greaves, he knew what he thinks about that result. He'll shut his mouth now anyway. Eh? So Greaves just goes, goes, goes back to the studio with that, just laughs it off. Fucking, it was class, man. They were great times for fucking. Yeah, that was my era, man. Greaves, he was for mine too. That was fucking unbelievable. Saturday I remember watching brilliant. that shit on a fucking Saturday morning. You have to give me, you have to fucking me up because you have to put me back in a time warp. You know, when you get a bit of nostalgia, you have to yeah. fucking send me back to the fucking. I used to sit there and watch. I used to tape fucking Satan Greaves just to watch it back because. We didn't have the internet, you have to understand. It was different times. Like, <laughs> life was more kind of like, you know, stone and pencil in days, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Here, you're getting a bit advanced there with your fucking fax machine. We're talking fucking the f- phones that you fucking, talking, like clocks, so you dial the fucking shit up. <laughs> We're talking chalk and tablet here, Steve. Oh, I, I, I'm the same age, don't worry, I remember. Um, that incident, I remember it at the time, but um, I'll just read it out quickly. So uh, it was Tony Wilson against Steve McCarthy. So McCarthy knocked Wilson down in the third round. He was looking to finish the fight with Wilson on the ropes. The fight was stopped when Wilson's 62-year-old mother climbed into the ring and started attacking McCarthy with her shoe. McCarthy's corner man also entered the ring. McCarthy thought he'd won, but the referee then gave the win to Wilson. McCarthy refused to continue because he had four stitches in his head due to the stiletto. Uh, Wilson was declared the winner by technical knockout. A riot ensued and Wilson's mother had to be dragged from the ring by a hair by a security guard. McCarthy returned to the ring, but only to calm the crowd. And Andy, as I said to Banderpool on Twitter, I do have a sort of low-key story ab- about this fight. Yeah. Ye- years, About 20 years ago, me and my friend Big John were in Wolverhampton Town. And I, I was know. actually... Big John was, Fury? Chinese. Not, Chinese, not Big John eh? Fury. Oh, we were in the... Big John <laughs> Fisher. <laughs> well, yeah, might, might as well have been. Big John was a big guy. We were in the kebab house and I was actually at two o'clock in the morning. I was telling John this story about the woman jumping in with a stiletto and a gentleman standing across the kebab house oh, no. jumps in and says, whoa, that, that was my brother who was boxing that night. And the woman who jumped in the ring was my mom. And I thought to myself, I right, write whatever. But there is a bit of credence to the story. Tony Wilson was, in fact, from Wolverhampton. So the chances are maybe Andy uh, that this guy decent. was indeed telling the truth. Like so, there you, decent, go. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I'm trying to admit. I, I I can remember seeing it, but it must have been on Saturday well, because that was a Saturday. Yeah. Saturday yeah. was usually late morning. It, it, Saturday like, morning mid- it was after the you, you kind of got like the anyway, chart yeah. show. You got the chart show in the morning, didn't you? Then you got you might have got a bit of a magazine show on Saturday ah, yeah. for the football over the BBC One for the fucking live results. 
And you always got the highlights of the games in midweek and that, especially the European games and the British sides that were involved. But I'm sure I must have seen it on that. I, I, because obviously it must have been on TV, that fight, because if you notice the wee kind of black and white thing in the corner, Steve, mm -hmm. yep. that, 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 that used to come up on STV. Well, ITV, the, yeah, on ITV and STV used to, used to show a lot of fights back aye, in those days, especially aye, the Mexican ones. Grandstand but, and all but yeah. See, see, oh, see that black and white tab that comes up at the top right-hand corner of the screen? That yes. used to be the indicator that, used to, that was getting ready to go to commercial break. Yes. That's David Icke used to be on grandstand. Aye. What a guy. Yeah. He's lying him. <laughs> he was Irish, by the way, wasn't he? He's still alive, isn't he? He's lying him, was, yeah. He's lying him, I. Yeah. I thought he was only pretending like that, Jerry Adams. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, well. <laughs> that's a, a comedy of Steve for the intro. Chuck we're going to get those, gonna get those 33 counties back. <laughs> On the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope the zone are here to see it. <laughs> oh, amazing. I mean, can you imagine it? I mean, the South Korean handle, <laughs> the, the handle was happening with immigrants just like, they wasn't trying to take back the North. <laughs> oh, um, what are you talking about? Come and take us back. Nobody, t I tell you what, right? If the Brits came and invaded in the morning, nobody come out and fight them. They'd be all too busy fucking smoking weed, playing PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke space. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I had a nomination actually. Um, yes, go ahead, Rob. Fucking is it? What's the guy's name? Is it Lionel Thompson? Um, oh, Lonnie B. Oh yes, yes, he's good value. Him. He's a he's a what is he a sixty eight pounder? Yep. Aye. And yeah, uh, he he talked about his experience as a sparring partner for Batarbiev. So, oh, the soul, the soul got my body. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said about his dad. He said his, he asked his dad, like, you know, I'm going to spar Batarbiev, and he said all the fighters that he fought over the years, like his dad was like, like you could do it, like, and his dad was like, you don't want that. And he was we like, we don't what? need that. Yeah, he's like, no, 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 we don't need that. And he's like, what? So he went to the gym, and he was like, now fuck that, I'm going to go. For, you know, I spar Francis, spar these high level guys. He's like, I fucking go to the gym, whatever, spar Batarbiev. Like, so he goes to. The gym, and someone else was doing was like, Yeah, I don't know. This is gonna be a short day, like, just, just do what you can. <laughs> and he was like, Do what I can. So he said, When he got hit with the first right hand, that he felt like he left out, like his soul left his body. <laughs> He's a good storyteller, isn't he? Oh, but it I was said, fucking brilliant. What do you want me to do? He goes, Just do your best, son. <laughs> yeah, 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 just do, yeah, yeah, just do my best. What the fuck does that mean? He said, When Survive, he, basically, you're he said when he got hit with the first right hand, he could he felt like his soul was leaving his body. Like, but I can imagine because you, you see that on fighters where Batarbiev hits him, like it's a different kind of fucking reaction. Like, isn't this reminds you of the Curtis Stevens Golovkin stuff? Like, but that was amazing the way he told that. Like, I so I only saw it for the first time this week, but I was cracking up. I can, last I, can I can envisage uh, that moment and uh, what do you call it in snatch with Brad Pitt. When, when, when the golden brown starts playing, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, when, it's when he knocks out the guy in the boxing ring and he cuts the Jason statement and everything just goes quiet. And it goes, Now we are fucked. It's like, <laughs> it's like when he takes out a shot, he's like, Now I'm fucked by the way. Because that's what it is. You put fucking the cunt has brick walls, man, for his job. Oh, what the I've seen that a few weeks ago, Rob. Someone put it in the notice chat. He, he, he tells the story well. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, no. And, and, and like, but uh, listening to like Iceman Scully and all talking about Batarbiev as well, like he just keeps saying, like he, he he's different like and he i remember scully was early on kovalev like back in the days he was like he was calling him to be like the the, the main guy to come through like and dominate like and the, he's obviously working with batari yeah, but some of the stuff he says about fucking spar partners like the spar partners are all petrified like they're fucking they're like imagine that like fuck's sake he's a it's scary like bastard remember, remember who was it i remember um somebody told the story about golovkin sparring up at big bear and that and they have to put on fucking um, fucking body protection because he's fucking snapping ribs and that with fucking left hooks to the body. You're like, fuck it. Fucking got a bit of a... Do you know what? Body, oh, side, body side oh, bar. doesn't get enough credit, by the way. Eh? Sidebar, I, I, I know we're on value of the week, but Golovkin doesn't get enough credit for how good he was, I don't think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, he, he's prime past his... George his Groves. Past That's Biden, who it was. He? George Groves yes. got, his, got his rib broken, aye. George Groves got his rib broken, but there was a great story, actually. I remember, I, I can't remember who told it, but um, Alfredo Angulo was up sparring in Big Bear, and this was back in, like, 2012, 2011, when no one really knew who in America. You know, he had only moved over to Big Bear about 18 months. Um, and Angulo came into the gym, and he, he, was, uh, he tried to really put it on Golovkin, um, and he, he got an absolute... He got a he got a serious beating. Like he got um, 
about half an hour later he was he was crawling out of the ring you know he um he is I, I can't remember who, he, he, he is not been I can't remember who said it. Just the interesting, the interesting one about Golovkin with the Mexican style, they all say it's to do with the fighters, but I remember one of his early Ellie Secback interviews and he was talking about Mexican style and he said that some of his Mexican friends brought him to a Christmas party and he was dancing with the Mexican girls and he was going to Mexican style and Mexican style. And I knew what the mm-hmm. fuck he meant. It was nothing to do with the fucking fighting. It's <laughs> 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 chicas. Vida loca. <laughs> Scully, um, I think the, the interesting thing about Scully, he look, apparently looks after the sparring partners. He picks them up from the airport for Baturbi, if this is. He sort of. Uh, he, works, he works with Mark Ramsey, mate. He works with Mark that's Ramsey. That's right. That's right. Try. Picks them up from the airport, just plays the theme tune from Jaws all the way to the gym. Got to need a bigger boat, mate. <laughs> got to need a bigger head guard. Uh, <laughs> uh, apparently, that, now, that lad from. Uh, Manchester, Callum Simpson. Apparently, he's one of the one of the only ones that um, managed to survive the whole the whole hog of sparring with Turby, so much so that they invited him back after his first time. So, like he he apparently survived the experience. But um, yeah, there's been some odd stories about him already. Imagine there's a story about one guy who survived the sparring. <laughs> I'm fucking tell you what it's like sparring with Terbev. I'll never, I'll never forget two things as long as I live with, 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 with Terbev. One is um, sparring the shotgun jabs at the fucking at the at the wall, and two is I'm fucking spinning that that uh, that bar, that weightlifting bar with one hand in a circular motion. How the f- I snapped my wrist if I tried that shit, man. These things must weigh weigh about fifty pounds easy. Maybe even slightly like fifty pounds. Sorry, probably yeah, probably fifty pound, fifty kilos possible. I don't know how much they weigh, they but fucking this guy was spinning like, like a fucking toothpick, man. I it's said you like... and Do- I said what you and Dominic didn't know earlier. Whenever he was doing the Aye, hitting the punch bag, with. and somebody put a message in the chat or something saying the rest of the gym reporting an active shooter in the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's scary. Like I I spied a couple of big punches, like and luckily I was able to like ride shots and okay, caught clean with a lot of times. But a pro golfer hit me harder than anybody. He wasn't fucking. He wasn't a boxer. Or whatever he was messing Hello. about. He's having a spar. Hit me with a fucking shot. I felt the fucking. It hit me. He hit me so hard. It hit me in the chin, and I felt like an electric shot went out the fucking sole of my foot. <laughs> he fucking <laughs> absolute. No, I didn't. I didn't I, go down like. But he planted me with a shot. It was fucking. And I was like, if this fella ever decides to put on gloves, he's gonna fucking kill everyone because he's a <laughs> fucking monster. Just for just for sharing stories, I'll tell you, my one. I remember getting hot by a left hook once. It was so hard that it wrung my ears. I actually even heard everybody at ringside who was actually watching the sparring session because it was a round robin spar, right? And all I heard was going, going "Ooh!" because it was a it was a heavy shot, right? And I started tapping my my jaw. I was like, "Fucking hell, that was serious, fuck!" I see my <laughs> mouth. I couldn't get my mouthpiece out, but I see my took my mouthpiece out. I tried to then like clasp my my, my mouth again. I couldn't fucking do it. I mm-hmm. thought I broke my jaw, man. I obviously was stretched the ligaments in my jaw for about three or four days, just trying to loosen it off. I thought I broke my jaw, man. Fucking hell, the, the hardest I've ever been hit is best stiletto. <laughs> well, she, told you know. that one. she told you well, no, it was a mate. fight of sorts <laughs> it's a funny story actually it's a funny story I'll, I'll save it for after but um what was i going to say there it was um i, I think it was about um <laughs> the turvy or something else who, who, what who was andy talking about there about the turvy oh, i can't remember i can't remember steve come back to it if you remote if you if you recall it and the it, it me, Dominic. He's doing <laughs> fucking tales after the pod, and he can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, one for Ryan Garcia, mate, and uh, one for our man, the the debutant Aaron Poland last night for dropping the dropping the oh, oh first, my god, <laughs> drop, drop, <laughs> dropping the body slam, but then dropping the elbow, and then obviously the bucket ice coming in as well to try and knock about. But yeah, I thought that was good banter as well. That was a good one. Uh, Dominic, any nominations? Just forgot he, what sport he was playing. Like <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a good one. Yeah, he took it. He took it to the cobbles, mate. He took it to the hard road. <laughs> no nominations for me, Steve, this week. Nothing from Dominic. Nothing from us. Anything from you, Rob? No, just my man uh, Lionel and uh, obviously Garcia for his antics. Like and Oscar and Bernard as well. I'm fucking fed up. Bernard Hopkins is one of my favorite fighters. Oscar's up there as well. But I am fucking fed up with these two as Golden Boy. Like, how are they the fucking promotional face of any company in 2024? Fuck me. Like, 
They're, they're more or less figureheads, though, isn't it? Eric Gomez is the guy that really runs the show there. Yeah. Although, the, the, as you said to me a few months ago, Steve, they've made the sort of um, ill-conceived decision to get rid of R Robert Diaz, which can't be good for them. But They um, seem to have rode it out, though, because the recent shows, to be fair, have still have the same kind of quality. But in the long run, I wonder if that'll be a decision they'll rue. Yeah. I, I, the thing I was going to say, actually, it was you know, a few minutes ago, Rob was saying about being hit by that golfer. And, you know, what what is it you said, Rob? You felt like electric shock down through your feet. But it reminded me of... Yeah. It reminded me of what uh, Kevin Kelly, um, you know, it was an interview with Nas, like one of these retrospectives on his career. It was about 10 years ago and he was reminiscing about the Kevin Kelly fight. And he was, whoever Nas fought before the Kevin Kelly fight, um, Kevin Kelly was over in England watching it and they got him on the apron after the fight and he was sitting beside Nas on the apron. And and smoke you know, his was, boots. I got to say, smoke his boots. And uh, Nas, you know the way Nas tells the story and he was all, I didn't know what Kevin meant. I didn't know what he meant. <laughs> And then he said, what he, when Kevin Kelly decked him in that first round, he said, then I knew what he meant. I'm going to smoke your boots. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I should seen one there for John Fury, actually, for sticking up to AJ. Oh, yes, oh. that's right. There's How many was talking about that earlier? There's some meeting between Big John was embracing AJ like he was a son. <laughs> Good old John. Son from another mother, eh? <laughs> Right, so let's go through them quickly then before we close out. We had Saint and Greavesy and the Stiletto incident. We had Oscar and the bra, the Titi Committee. Uh, we also had Andy fly Mitchell. No flies on Mitchell. Uh, the lights going out. Unfortunately, the sound didn't go out on Tim and Tess. We had his David Tour Hall of Famer. We had the smell of Tyson Fury. We had the smell, the stench of corruption from Dill. We had Ryan, who knows what's going on there. Uh, Matty getting the news about Puerto Rico. We got Jared Anderson. Going on the run, the incident and the comment from Alonzo. We had Charlie Parsons. We had the puff piece over at Boxing Scene. Ronnie, shout out with his T-shirt. Fight Hub going in with Rick Glazer. Save the date as well. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. oh yeah, Kinosuke the fighter. That's a great that's a great throwback name, isn't it, Andy? From the fighting over the weekend in Japan. Six foot one Southpaw, Kinosuke the fighter at welterweight. Um, I'm not sure if Who's a ninja, one. apparently? <laughs> <laughs> a fucking sniper's dream anyway those sounds it. <laughs> um, right. who are you going for Andy I'm going to go for Garcia mate Ooh. Ryan Garcia multiple so, offences multiple offences mate but obviously he's, he's playing up to a wee bit but some itself and at the same time as well and plus his old man's getting there's no allegations of racism for what was it he, well I'm not going to mention it in case it is class is racist by a certain Oh, Henry was going on about the hair. Aye, Henry's so, hair or something. I'll no get into that then, just in case it does offend anybody. But, uh, fucking, yeah, it's just, you kind of, you kind of saying to yourself, yeah, listen, mate, you better, he better back up about shit now, but that's, that's all I can say now. After all of this stuff and that, he's got to be backed up big time. So, I'll we'll go for Ryan Garcia. King Roy. Super Roy, as he's known as now. Dominic, who are you going for? Um, I was tempted to go for Matty for going all the way to Puerto Rico to see Amanda Serrano. He didn't go all the way to Puerto Rico just to see Amanda Serrano, but um, no, he I'll did. go for King Ray as well. He fucking Ooh. did. <laughs> <laughs> Two for Roy. Rob, who are you going for? It's got, yeah, it's got to be Garcia, but I will notice he gave one hilarious clap back uh, throughout the fucking press conference because Bill Haney was going on a rant and he said, shut up, Bill, you sound like Don King right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hair's, the hair's almost looking like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Right, congratulations, Ryan Garcia. You are the belly of the week winner for episode five, six, two. And that is where we shall leave it. Matty will be back, hopefully, if he gets back from Puerto Rico for episode five, six, three. If we get a pile of likes, we might consider doing a post-fight pod on Friday after AJ and Garno. If we don't, then we won't. We'll wait and see what happens, what comes in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all those beautiful things. Thanks to everyone who's been on tonight. Rapping Rob Kelly's been here. Dominic has ably deputised for Matthew, who will be in the hot seat next week. And he's been here as well. I've been Steve. We'll catch you all again. Same time, same place next week. And bye for now. We'll never forget... I think that's good at me. Go to Edinburgh! We want to be honest, yeah. Crying like a little bitch. I've never met a fucking so I can fight me. I, I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep. You're a fucking bum, you're a fucking asshole.
Rumpo fucking stealth skin. But allegedly, Oscar Rivas has, 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 failed, has failed a test. Seven year age. Seven year age. I will fucking smash. Fuck are you. I hope you fucking die. Be safe. I love boxing sounds. Simple as that.